بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم Are we live? How are you guys doing? Where are you guys tuning in from? I should actually introduce myself uh, before we begin. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Brother Bona Muhammad. I'm... Uh, uh, stop it. Guys, please. Everybody just stop. Okay, fine. All right. All right. All right. You caught me. It is I. Yes, it is I, Brother Bona Muhammad. I'm joining you here live for this wonderful Al Maghrib webinar. Alhamdulillah. Where are you guys tuning in from? Spam the chats. Let's see all the wonderful places. I see Sugarland, Newcastle, Kenya. Allahu Akbar. What time is it in Kenya right now? SubhanAllah. Uh, Minnesota, the other part of Kenya. Uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, Netherlands, France. Allahu Akbar. The, the whole Ummah has joined us today. Alhamdulillah. Seems like we are joined by the United Nations. Uh, Alhamdulillah. You know, part of today's so I'm trying to keep up with the uh, with the chats here, mashallah. Uh, you know, we are in the blessed month of Ramadan. I don't know exactly what time it is for you, uh, but I pray that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the tawfiq to make the best of this month, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your fasting, your zakah, your sadaqah, your zik your, your qiyam, your uh, every good deed, mashallah, you've been doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, it's an honor to be with you joined here today. I believe on the 19th or 20th day of Ramadan, mashallah, you know, time is running fast, subhanAllah. I remember just a few days ago, we were saying Ramadan Mubarak, welcome Ramadan, and now we're almost about to say goodbye, so subhanAllah, how bittersweet it is. Uh, where else are you guys tuning in from? It's almost 1 a.m. in Malaysia, subhanAllah, 8 p.m. in Kenya. What time is it in the Philippines? Somebody said it is 10 p.m. in India, Allahu Akbar. 7 p.m. in South Africa, 1 a.m. in the Philippines, uh, 1659 in London. Someone's going to have to translate. What is 1659? What is 16 again in military time? I'm sorry. I never served time in the army. What is 1659? That is 459. Okay. Mm -hmm. Almost five, mashallah. Um, yes, I'm quite fascinated by time zones for anyone that's wondering. Um, because mashallah, you know, although we are so far apart, we are all on different parts of the earth. We are all connected, alhamdulillah. The Prophet ﷺ taught us this ummah is like one body, you know? So, and of course, when one part of the body feels pain, we all feel that pain. And of course, we're making dua for all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering around the world. We haven't forgotten about our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help and protect the people of Sudan, of Kashmir, anywhere Muslims are being oppressed and harmed and hurt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, relieve them of that suffering. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory, inshallah. Um, we are going to begin very shortly. I'm sure most of you know um, why we're here today. Alhamdulillah, we're supporting an amazing institution, Al Maghrib Institute, which is the largest student body, English student body of Islamic studies in the world. Alhamdulillah, I myself have been a student with Al Maghrib for almost a decade, probably a decade plus. So I can really attribute, you know, a lot of my own personal success and growth to this amazing institute. Alhamdulillah, and now we are you know, ushering the new generation of students and the new generation of uh, students of knowledge, mashallah. So we're going to hear from some of our instructors today on this uh, very important topic. And of course, we are hoping, inshallah, to make an impact in the lives of many students around the world who hope to one day, inshallah, attend Al Maghrib Institute courses. Perhaps they are living in countries where, you know, on-site courses aren't available. Perhaps they are um, you know, in countries where they just so simply can't afford to attend. So we are, inshallah, going to be helping those students. We're also going to be helping further develop the curriculum, the institution's long-term vision. And, you know, we are, subhanAllah, living out the vision of our, uh, you know, founder, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, Allah, yarham, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy on his soul, who was a visionary and saw, you know, quite clearly into the future, the need of accommodating, you know, Western-speaking um, or English-speaking students Islamic students by providing Islam in an easy to comprehend way, in a way that is, you know, done with Ihsan, in a way that is done in, you know, comparison to university classrooms, the way, is, you know, knowledge is taught in those settings. The fact that we can now have Islamic institutes that are upholding that same barometer, alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful thing. Um, 
I want to make sure that, um, you know, we have a, a beautiful day. Alhamdulillah, for some of you, it's, uh, I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Toronto right now. Where's all my Canadians at? Spam the chat. I want to make a little bit of a East Coast, West Coast robbery. I know we have some Americans that are joining us. Ugh, don't ask me why. Okay. But they're here regardless. So Alhamdulillah, we're going to share in the khair. Where's Canada? Here we go. Someone said they're from Dubai. Dubai, that's the eastern part of, of Canada, I believe. T dot, yeah, Calgary. Okay. Um, where where is everybody else calling from or watching in from? Okay, so we got a lot of different Toronto. I see London, Ontario. What about the Americans? Where are the Americans tuning in from? Let's what cities in the Amer in the US are representing here today? Ooh, Houston, Texas. All right, Chicago, uh, Minnesota, Vienna, wow, Turkey, whoa, 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 mashallah. Sheikh Suleiman, I don't know if you can see this, but it is like, you know, the whole ummah is with us today. Alhamdulillah. Every qabila under the sun, even qabila that we didn't even invent yet, mashallah, they're already here. So it's good news for us, alhamdulillah. Um, I think we're going to get started, inshallah. Um, please give me the green light uh, on the back end, inshallah, if we're good to go. Um, I believe that um, we have a video that we're going to be playing shortly, inshallah. Uh, and once we do, we'll come back after the video, inshallah, and we can talk more about, um, you know, the amazing project that, inshallah, we're helping to support today, which is building Al Maghrib Institute's next chapter. So let's play that video, inshallah, and then we'll... In 2002, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimahullah, set out with a simple vision of making Islamic knowledge easy and accessible for everyone. So he founded Al Maghrib, and with Allah's permission and support from people like you, We've been carrying on that vision for the past 22 years. More than 40 chapters worldwide, over 2,000 events, and a quarter of a million students taught, Amagrib has grown into the largest body of students learning Islam in the English-speaking world, in person and online. Here's a look at what you made possible in that time. 22 years of in-person classes, from weekend seminars to inspiring ilm nights, conferences, retreats, and more. Life-changing seminars and events with world-renowned teachers hosted by dedicated and passionate teams of volunteers who've been at the heart of this organization from the very beginning. Our student family stretches across 40 cities in four continents and has grown to be the largest student body studying Islam in the Western world. Live virtual seminars, when the rest of the world shut down in 2020, your support helped us carry on by bringing the classroom experience directly to your homes through virtual seminars, keeping communities of knowledge thriving and reaching new students who otherwise can't attend in person. Online on-demand courses, your chance to study in depth at your own pace. Alhamdulillah, over the past few years, we've been able to record hundreds of hours of studio quality courses for students to carry over a lifetime. Faith Essentials, our complete online library of bite-sized courses covering all the absolute basics of Islam, from belief to worship to relationships and everyday interactions. Quran Revolution, our flagship recitation program, helping Muslims from all walks of life recite Allah's word smoothly and confidently, all through a simplified app-based program run by Imam Wissam Sharif and a dedicated team of Quran coaches. Ilmspring, Islamic education for kids reimagined. A partnership between Al Maghrib and Noor Kids, our mission is to present the beauty of Islam to our children through unique programming that will educate, inspire, build character, and help kids love Islam. Blessed Voyage, Blessed Voyage is our premier service taking you around the world with the expert guidance of our instructors. Whether you dream of going on Hajj or Umrah, visiting Al-Aqsa, or seeing the Islamic world with your own eyes, Blessed Voyage turns your travels into a transformative, memorable learning experience. And the biggest of all, one-click scholarships. Since the beginning, Al Maghrib has been breaking barriers in Islamic education with our scholarship scheme for struggling parents, students, and new Muslims. And your donation has helped us develop and refine that into a simplified one-click process so that everybody has equal access to beneficial knowledge. Alhamdulillah, the past 22 years of this da'wah have been incredible. And with Allah's permission and your continued support, we hope for the future to be even greater. Hey, let's give another round of applause for Al Maghrib Institute, MashaAllah. Amazing. Round of applause in the chat, everyone. Oh, guys, come on. You're too kind. 
You are too kind. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You know, you don't have to thank me. I didn't do much, MashaAllah. But, you know, it's MashaAllah. Beautiful to see that vision. And of course, we, like I said, we are living out the, you know, the long-term goals and visions of our founder, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on his soul. And so we are, inshallah, going to be helping to expand, grow, and spread this beautiful message of Islam. And through this institute, al Maghrib Institute, inshallah, we hope to reach the hearts of millions of people around the world. I'm going to be joined in right now by our first instructor, inshallah, who's going to address you all. I want you to greet him in a very, very warm virtual manner please give a round of applause for Sheikh Suleiman Hani inshallah Sheikh they love you on this side look, look at the applause Sheikh mashallah buna you mashallah buna everyone the entire ummah came out for you bro mashallah may Allah accept i mean ya rab barakallahu feekum jazakumullah khairan Sheikh i hope you're doing well bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala uh, SubhanAllah, we literally do have people from maybe over 150 countries just over here right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all, keep our hearts united, Allahumma ameen, and keep our dua for one another consistent, Allahumma ameen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the final webinar that we do every year at the end of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and bring down His swift justice, His relief, His mercy to our brothers and sisters in every land and every place in which his name is mentioned. Allahumma ameen. Our webinar, as you'll see with every session, inshallah ta'ala, is all about the stories of accepted dua. And this will help you to cultivate your dua, your relationship with Allah. This will help you to change your lifestyle, your vision, your goals, inshallah ta'ala. Dua is a lifestyle. It is the essence of worship. And so I'll begin actually by sharing a very, very, very brief story, inshallah ta'ala. One time, Anas radiallahu an, he reported, Kuntu ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fada'a rajulun faqal, a man was next to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Anas is observing, and he's reporting this story to us. And what does he see? He sees this man making dua, and the man says, Ya badi'a as-samawat, ya hayyu, ya qayyum, inni as'aluk. The man basically is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's saying, O creator, originator of the heavens and the earth, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, the ever living, the self-sufficient, I ask of you. And then he asked for what he needed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَقَالْ أَتَدْرُونَ بِمَا دَعَى He said, do you know what he prayed with? وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, دَعَى اللَّهَ بِسْمِهِ الَّذِي إِذَا دُعَى بِهِ Ajab. He said, the man asked Allah by the name that he answers when he's asked by it. And this is reported in Adab al-Mufrad uh, by Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. So what is the dua I want to share with you? I actually want to give you not just this story. I want to give you a specific dua. This is one of the most famous dua. And I assume if we have over a thousand people listening, perhaps a, a great percentage of you have already memorized it. But I want us to be reminded of it to implement it, and to move forward with it as a lifestyle. What is the dua? First, let me ask you this question. Does the Prophet ﷺ love his daughter Fatima? Anha? Yes or no? I assume we're all on the same page. Yes, absolutely. So one time he came to her and he said he, to, to his daughter, he said, what could prevent you from listening to the advice that I'm going to give you? To say the following in the morning and in the evening. And then he gave her a dua. You know the Prophet ﷺ loves this ummah. You know that he loves his family. You know that he loves his daughter. Anha. So when he tells her, what would prevent you? In other words, don't let anything prevent you from me giving you this advice and you receiving it. And to say the following dua in the morning and in the evening. And this is one of the most comprehensive dua. And it is one of my favorite. Ya hayyu ya qayyum. He taught her وسلم, to say, Ya hayyu ya qayyum. O oh, ever living, O oh, self sustaining, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of us. I call upon you, I beg you by your mercy. I beg you by your mercy. Help me with all of my affairs. Help me to fix all of my issues. And don't leave me to myself. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me, O oh Allah, for the blinking of an eye. And it's an authentic. Dua, an authentic hadith. We can have it copy pasted in English and Arabic here. It's in Fortress of the Muslim as well. This dua is so powerful. And what's amazing about it, let's break it down very quickly. It is a story of a dua here 
because of the advice to Fatima radiallahu anha, the Prophet is saying, call upon Allah by this particular name. This name is found paired, these two names paired three times in the Quran. Three times in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, Surah Taha, the most powerful ayah of the Quran is what? The most powerful verse in the entire Quran is what? It is Ayat Al-Kursi, 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And so when you think about it, one of the reasons the scholars say it's so powerful is because it also includes the name of Allah or the names of Allah, Al-Hayyul Qayyum. You're calling upon Al-Hayyul Qayyum. He's always there. He's not cut off. You never lose access to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, is telling you that emergency line that you think sometimes you need and with humans, you cannot always access them or you cannot rely upon them or you have to wait for certain things and they might not be able to actually support you. Allah is always there for you. He's ever living. He does not perish. We perish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not disappoint, but humans disappoint. Allah manages the entire universe. People cannot manage the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta is telling you in other words, he can help you change a situation that you thought there was no way to change. But it requires you to take the means. And the means here is your dua and any other action that is required. So when you make this dua, you're saying, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Oh Allah, I beg you by your mercy because you recognize his mercy. And the fact that he controls all situations and the fact that he is ever living. You are saying, help me, Ya Allah, fix everything. What does that mean? This dua is a dua for your health, your wealth your children, your parents, your family, your relationship, your marriage, whatever you're struggling with, your studies, your job, your finances, poverty, whatever situation it is, you are saying, oh Allah, help me with everything. It is such a comprehensive dua, you can't possibly hear this, this narration, that he told Fatima Anha to make this dua, and then you would abandon it. You can't possibly do that. The Prophet Wasallam is giving us something that will help us as a blueprint in life. Oh Allah, don't leave me to myself to fix my situations for the blinking of an eye. Why is this dua so powerful? Not only because of the names of Allah you find in it, not only because you call upon him by his mercy, not only because you're asking Allah to help you with everything, meaning you know that he can, but also because you have humility when you say, oh Allah, don't leave me to myself for the blinking of an eye. There's a brother who one time told me he made millions of dollars and he used to look back at his college years as a college student when he was very much broke. And he used to make dua to be very wealthy. And he used to say, I want to give him charity. And then he noticed something one day, long uh, after he's been given all this wealth, he started. I started to think about the reality that I've become distant from Allah. Allah gave me the things I wanted of a dunya, but I stopped being grateful. I stopped making as much dua. The best thing you can do, and one of the lessons you will hear in many of the stories today, is to make dua in times of ease and times of difficulty to make dua for things that you think you have control over and the reality that you have no control over anything, that Allah allows you to sustain what you have, to maintain that wealth, to maintain your health. So if you have food today as you watch what's happening in Gaza, alhamdulillah for your situation, may Allah make it easy for our brothers and sisters. So you make dua for the food that you have. You make dua for the rizq that you have. You're married, you make dua for your marriage. You have children, you make dua for your children. You make dua for these things because you recognize dua is not a, a business transaction. It's not a store where you're buying something and then whatever you get, you move on. Dua is a lifestyle. Dua is a relationship between master and servant, creator and creation. Dua is a proof that you know you're in need of Allah and that without him, we would have nothing. That state of sincerity in the heart is the most important thing as the dua then reaches your tongue and you express it, starts inside and then it's expressed and then you repeat and you repeat and you repeat and you beg Allah by his mercy and you never give up. We see every Ramadan as the last 10 nights begin, people making dua so sincerely. And then after Ramadan saying, I noticed my dua was accepted or an Arafa, they're making dua and they said, I noticed it was accepted this year and they'll share their stories. But remember this, one of the reasons your dua is accepted in these times is because you made the dua more passionately, because you were also more sincere, because your heart was more mindful humble, present, and begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, this dua, take it 
take it far, run with it. It was the advice given to Fatima, radiallahu anha, and by extension and advice given to all of us. Ya hayu ya qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith, aslih li sha'ni kulla, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata ayn. You ask Allah to help you with all of your affairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and also to make dua for one another and our ummah all around the world in every land and every place in Palestine, Gaza, Sudan, and East Turkestan, and Yemen, and Syria, and everywhere where you are seeing you're coming in from and the places that are not represented here. May Allah make it easy for our brothers and sisters. Keep our hearts united and keep us consistent in dua in the following nights. Allahumma ameen. Wa salli lahum ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. And I was told, inshallah ta'ala, what I want to do very quickly for the next few minutes, actually something I really enjoy doing on behalf of Al-Maghrib Institute in this particular role, and it is to share with you actually some of the things that Al-Maghrib is doing. And oftentimes, many of the students are very impressed and amazed at how much is going on in just one institute, may Allah put barakah in it and reward all of you for showing up today, for being present, for supporting this institute and this opportunity to invest in the entirety of the ummah. So it has been 20 plus years now for the Maghrib Institute. May Allah have mercy on Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimahullah, who had this vision. And as we move to the next slide, I want you to think about what al Maghrib has done. It's made the path to Jannah easier for so many people around the world. Al Maghrib Institute, what it has done is it has helped people to understand how to practice Islam, authentic Islamic knowledge that is easy and accessible. And now, Alhamdulillah, in the last four, five, six years, it is worldwide. We have over 255,000 students, and you are all, Alhamdulillah, amongst them. And we welcome you to join us for all of the different programs. Some of you ask, what are the programs? Look at the next slide, and you will see some of these programs. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, uh, some of you saw just last year, by the way, just last year, uh, with the donations and the support to Al Maghrib Institute, I, I actually want to go back to the last slide and emphasize a really interesting point. Not every charity is the same. You know, sometimes in Ramadan, a lot more people are giving charity and wondering where's the biggest impact. I personally, I personally love the following concept, and my teachers have emphasized this for years. Not every charity is the same. When you give to certain uh, institutions like Al Maghrib Institute, what ends up happening? What ends up happening is you're benefiting over 1,500 students who are given scholarships, learning Islam and practicing, reviving it and teaching it. And then you're also thinking about the 55,000 students who benefited from this. You're thinking about the 2 million views on YouTube and social media apps. You're thinking about all the people who watched the content that was consumed and this is all part of your charity. You're thinking about the 28 cities just last year that you helped to support Al Maghrib in. In other words, the students all around the world literally are Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, and Singapore, all the way west, you have the, all across Europe, and you have, alhamdulillah, all across North America. The reality with charity towards Al Maghrib Institute is that it goes really far. And we're showing you here where it's going. And this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Overall, it's been in over, actually, maybe over 50 cities worldwide. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. What are some of the programs that we have? If you look here, you'll see a few examples. We've had over 36,000 students take the online courses. These are professionally recorded classes in a studio, there are some live Q and A's. Alhamdulillah, many of you have taken these classes and you found them to be beneficial. You have lifetime access to these classes. So we've had students go back over and over and over and continue to benefit from this material, Alhamdulillah, with some of our top instructors. We also have the live virtuals that took off during the pandemic. And Allahu Akbar, how many people have benefited during the pandemic worldwide? These are here to stay, inshallah ta'ala. We've, uh, alhamdulillah, taught over 60,000 uh, students in general with the online and the virtual. Alhamdulillah, 60 courses uh, were taught. We have a lot more coming out and actually some exciting news that you'll hear about later, inshallah ta'ala, this year about the uh, programs that we'll have. Quran Revolution, I've personally see, seen students enter. They didn't know how to recite. They learned Tajweed, and when I heard them a few years later reciting, uh, like Qurra, I was impressed. I'm like, what happened? He said, I took Qur'an Revolution. I took the program. I went through. I did what I could. Alhamdulillah, we have students all over the world taking these classes, learning how to recite, coming out with Tajweed, memorizing as well. Alhamdulillah. And finally, Faith Essentials. If you want the absolute essentials of Islam, you want two hours, not 20 hours, just the introduction to salah, the introduction to character. A lot of new Muslims take these classes. A lot of Muslims uh, wanting to learn and, and establish foundations. And they said, throughout my life, I feel like I learned about Islam in random ways. But now it's structured. You have 33 classes and a lot more coming, inshallah ta'ala. Over 4,000 students taking these courses. And finally, when you look at the next slide, you'll see as well, alhamdulillah, we have Spring. Uh, these wonderful kids from around the world learning. 
How do you know the Quran is the word of Allah? How do you know the Prophet ﷺ is the prophet of God? How do you pray the, the right prayer and understand its sweetness, not just the physical movements? So we've had over 5,500 of these young students, alhamdulillah, run into them different places and they come up to me and say, I saw you on Zoom, mashallah. And I'll be like, mashallah, I saw all of you on Zoom as well a good couple hundred of you paying attention, taking notes as best as you can. And finally, you have the Tarbiyah program launched during the pandemic. Alhamdulillah, it's been four years with the Tarbiyah program. We've had almost 500 students. What is Tarbiyah? It's a private mentorship program. You have 15 students with one mentor for about three months. We also have a special version of this in Ramadan alone, the Ramadan Murabi program. We have currently now, alhamdulillah, uh, about 100 students and over maybe 500 last four years. And many of you, alhamdulillah, have seen how to make this Ramadan the best of uh, the best Ramadan of your life. In other words, this is the suhba, the friendship, the companionship with a mentor, with a group of brothers or sisters who are trying to get to the same results of growth and development and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Maghrib Impact as well over the years has done a lot of great work with social projects and ultimately the scholarships that you made possible through your donations have helped countless people to benefit not just the 1500 people who benefited last year but all the people who benefited from them all the people that were impacted by those who attend the al maghrib programs online and offline across the world so although we say it's 255,000 students who've taken courses it's a much greater number in terms of those who are impacted. We can easily say it is in the millions, alhamdulillah, with all the instructors and all the students. And I'll share it with you on a personal note as I close off here. And I'm done with the presentation, inshallah ta'ala. But I'll share with you a personal note. And I, I haven't shared this in public before, but I have so many students who come up to me and they'll ask me about my experience with two uh, different programs that I did in my life. They'll ask me about the University of Jordan and they'll ask me about Harvard University. And I don't like to mention these two for a reason. These two are brought up because people like to ask, where did this person study? When people ask me about my studies and what was transformative for me, I'll say, ask me about Al-Maghrib Institute. Ask me about the classes I took with Al-Maghrib for over 10, 15 years. And Alhamdulillah, even with the new courses uh, that the instructors develop and I'm helping to oversee, I'm benefiting from these uh, instructors, from the material, from the programs. Al-Maghrib Institute does shape the lives of many people who go on to serve in their communities. They may go on to study in other universities. They may go on to earn masters and PhDs and teach and so on and so forth. But a lot of it starts at Al-Maghrib Institute. A lot of families are established through Al-Maghrib Institute in terms of their development and their growth. So by supporting this institute, it has a track record of 20 years, alhamdulillah. Your charity will go far bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So as you give and as you support, have a sincere intention. Oh Allah, I want this to be impactful on the ummah and I want this to be uh, impacting millions of lives and inshallah ta'ala you'll see the benefit of that but if not in this life especially in the next life may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from Shaykh Muhammad Sharif rahimullah and all the volunteers donors, staff and students and teachers over the years and may Allah accept from all of you for your support as well take advantage in these blessed days of Ramadan to support alhamdulillah we have these opportunities may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us wa salli ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah uh, they love you, Sheikh. They love you in the chat. Now, mashallah, Zakallah khair, Sheikh Suleiman Hani, for that wonderful insight. Of course, we know we're in the blessed month of Ramadan. Sheikh, you are involved in so much da'wah, so much activism, so much amazing work. Why do you personally support Al Maghrib Institute, especially in this blessed month? We know a lot of people are donating right now to a lot of amazing causes. Um, why should people also invest in Al Maghrib Institute? I kind of just gave that pitch, uh, actually, uh, that you have seen the impact of Al-Maghrib across the world. Millions of people, not not the 255,000 students, millions of people benefiting indirectly as well, alhamdulillah, through Al-Maghrib Institute. It's one of the smartest charities you can give. It's one of those charities that you give, inshallah ta'ala, sincerely. When you look back, inshallah ta'ala, in the next life, you'll have no regrets. In fact, if there's any regret, it might be, I wish I did more. I wish I invested more. The ripple effect from the Institute, we've already seen 20 years of the tip of the iceberg. So imagine what could happen in 100 years, 200, 500, but most importantly, what you'll see in the afterlife, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah accept from all of you for making the path to Jannah easier for our ummah, reviving the khayr in the ummah, supporting the students who go on to become activists, politicians, lawyers, engineers, mothers, and fathers who are doing amazing things and helping to establish universal justice in the world and prevent the problems that we are seeing in the ummah, it is done through this ilm, it is done through this movement. May Allah accept from everyone. Jazakumullah khairan to all of you for your support and for your uh, yani wise investment to say the least. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan Sheikh Suleiman Hani for that beautiful insight. Let's give him another round of applause. MashaAllah. He got us started right. He got us in the right spirit. MashaAllah. May Allah bless our Sheikh. You know what? I, I, didn't, I forgot to mention at the top that he's actually the director of academics, head of tarbiyah. 
and spiritual mentorship programs. And, you know, he's launched a course called It Was Written, which is all around Qadr. It's a being taught on site all around the world. So make sure you check that out, inshallah. Without further ado, we want to invite our next instructor. But before we do, make sure you guys are going to that donation link, almagrib.org slash donate. Now, Sheikh Suleiman pointed out all the amazing, mashallah, repercussions of your donations and the people that are benefiting and the you know knowledge that is growing and spreading. And so we incur incur kindly encourage all of you to be a part of that khair, inshallah, to join in that barakah train by making a contribution to almaghrib.org slash donate, inshallah. You can see the text here, the link inside the chat if you're watching on Zoom. Uh, and by the way, I think we got like almost a, th a thousand people in this Zoom. Give yourselves a round of applause. A thousand people. Two again. From all around the world. Allahu Akbar. We are such a blessed group, mashallah. So let's invite our next speaker, Sheikh Umar Hidruj to join us, mashallah. As you know, we have a lot of instructors. Uh, Sheikh Umar, mashallah, you actually have a course that you are de that you debuted in Atlanta, right? Blessed, which is 24 hours in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So mashallah, we're ex extremely excited to have you. Make some round of a no make some round of applause for our staff for joining us, mashallah. Sheikh Umar. We got a thousand people in the chat right now, mashallah. Uh, where, where are you tuning in from, Sheikh? I'm in Chicago, alhamdulillah. Chicago, Chicago Sharif. Allahu Akbar. Anyone else from Chicago here? Anyone else tuning in from Chicago? MashaAllah. Cool. A lot of people in the, in the chat. So Bismillah Sheikh, I'll let you take it away and we'll chat a little bit afterwards, inshallah. Exactly. I'm just wondering how many round of applauses are going to happen by the, the end of this. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair, Abuna. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Suleiman. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khairi khalq la nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. Alhamdulillah. What a beautiful sight to see just a thousand people just in this room and only Allah knows how many beyond that alhamdulillah to focus on and to be inspired by one of the core elements and essences of of Ramadan and that is our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I wanted to share actually two duas so one dua I wanted to share with you all it's one of my favorite duas uh, that I've ever heard and I heard it not that long ago but I wanted to take it into uh, an accepted dua that we find in the Quran. The, the dua that I, I love so much, that really just stuck with me the first time I heard it, is actually the dua of one of the most impactful and uh, amazing figures in our history, who wasn't from the Sahaba, but in his life, they kind of like grouped him with the Sahaba. And that is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, who is known as like the, the fifth uh, Khalifa Rashida, the fifth righteous Khalifa, even though he came after the Khulafa because of his lifestyle, because of what he was able to accomplish in the small amount of time that he was uh, the Khalifa of the Muslims. So he has this, this beautiful dua that I think is very relevant for us at this part of the month. See, this part of the month, as we enter into the last 10 nights, it is a time of excitement. It is a time of seeking Laylatul Qadr. It is a time where we kind of go into intense mode with our duas and with our ibadah. But it can also be a time maybe that many of us feel like we have fallen short. That many of us feel like, you know, I haven't accomplished the goals that I had set for myself in the beginning. Or that I've slipped up and I've made mistakes even though I thought this Ramadan was going to be different. And so maybe there's a feeling from many of us now or even towards the end of Ramadan where we feel like we have shortchanged ourselves, where we feel like we don't deserve to be amongst those who are forgiven. And this place where a person may find themselves in, this is where these duas come in so beautifully. And so Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, it was reported from him that he made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would say, Allahumma illam akun ahlan an ablugha rahmatak fa rahmatuka ahlun an tablughani. He would say, oh Allah, if I do not qualify to reach your mercy, meaning if my actions are deficient and flawed and I've messed up, I don't see myself as qualifying to reach your mercy. He says, your mercy certainly qualifies to reach me. I don't deserve it, but your mercy is 
greater than anything. And then he continues and he says something beautiful. He says, Allahumma in kunta uh, in, in qulta fi kitabik. Oh Allah, you said in your book, Rahmataka wasi'at kulla shay. That your mercy encompasses all things. Wa ana shay. And I am a thing. Right? Faltasa'ni rahmatak ya arham rahimin So let your mercy encompass me or accommodate me, O oh, most merciful of those who show mercy. This idea of forgiveness being found at the intersection of a person realizing how deficient I may be, my actions may be, how flawed they may be, maybe how I don't deserve it. We don't deserve anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us from our blessings, from our risk, even from the mercy that he has given us. We, 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 we acknowledge our own shortcomings, but we rely on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of who he is and not because of who we are. And so this idea of leaning into the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that's so powerful. And it doesn't mean here, as some may misunderstand it to be, that you just, okay, say, okay, Allah is ghafoor rahim. So I sit back and I just let that come to me and I don't do anything. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is actually a beautiful example of this, right? That when they asked his wife about him, uh, that she said, look, he was not the person who had the most amount of salah or the most amount of fasting. Like that's not what made him special. But she says, I swear by Allah, I never saw anyone who was more sincere in their fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the awe that they had of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like he would remember Allah, she's saying, he would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his bed. And I would see him shaking like a bird from the, the intensity of his awe, his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would be afraid that the people would wake up in the morning and they would not have a khalifa, right? So the, the point is that he, he, he put in the effort. He did what he could, but he also recognized, and this is the important point here, that it's about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the day. I will put forth the best effort that I can. I will exhaust all the resources that I have. But at the end of the day, it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I don't qualify to save myself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can save me. If I don't have the ability to transform myself into what I was seeking to transform myself into at the beginning of Ramadan, Allah azza wa has the ability. When I raise my hands and I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not just the dua that I'm making, right? It's not because of how beautiful my dua looks or sounds, but it's about the one who I am asking. And so I'm certain that my dua will be answered and I will get that mercy again, not because of who I am, but because who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And so to these two things, this juncture of recognizing my own inability and recognizing my own sh uh, shortcomings and flaws and that I don't deserve this, but at the same time, at that intersection of recognizing that the forgiveness, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all encompassing and that it is inimaginably vast. And so this is what we seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our imperfect actions. We seek the perfect forgiveness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hope that it reaches us. And the accepted dua that you find that parallels this, and there are many in the Quran, but is the dua of our father Adam alayhi salam. One of the first du'as that you're introduced to in the Qur'an. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Allah teaches Adam these words and so he forgave him. What were the words? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh, our Rabb, we have definitely wronged ourselves. We have fallen short. We have made mistakes, right? We acknowledge and we recognize that. We admit and we recognize our guilt. And if you do not forgive us and show mercy on us, O oh Allah, then we will most definitely be from the losers. And so we recognize our immense and absolute need, the necessity of the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we seek it in these days and in these nights. Again, not because we're doing something perfect, but because the one that we're seeking from is perfect and his mercy is vast enough to encompass me and my shortcomings and everything 
that I bring because of who he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the two du'as. The du'a of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Allahumma illam akun ahlan an ablugha rahmatak, wa rahmatuka ahlun an tablughani. And then the du'a of Adam that leads into it, Rabbana zalamna anfusana, wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and shower us with his mercy in these last few nights. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to do the actions that will unlock his mercy for us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh, jazakumullah khair. Can you guys hear me better now? I just changed my mic a little bit. I had a little bit of a setup here. Um, Shaykh, you know, mashallah, you, you've spoken so eloquently about this beautiful dua. What has been your experience? I mean, coming now, uh, being an Amagrib instructor, getting a chance to meet the student body. What has been the experience for you teaching classes on site, being able to see students in real life? Because I know you, you recently had your first course in, in Atlanta, correct? It was like, yeah, the one in Atlanta was a, a little bit of a soft launch of what we're doing, alhamdulillah. So it was amazing, honestly. It was amazing to get that feeling that uh, I, I remember having as a student uh, many years ago, alhamdulillah. So to be able to see that, you know, the setup, the students coming in, the intent, you know, like the attentiveness, all of that, alhamdulillah, just the... The, the the culture, the vibe that uh, is is a feeling that's hard to describe, but that's beautifully felt uh, when it's experienced. Alhamdulillah. And you know, Sheikh, mashallah, you've been involved in da'wah, you're, you're an imam, you're teaching. You have so many causes that you could be supporting. Why does Al-Maghrib hold a special place in your heart? And why should we be contributing to Al-Maghrib in this blessed month of Ramadan? SubhanAllah, uh, for me, uh, the Al-Maghrib feels like home. Like it feels like home. So it's it's something that, uh, I feel when I'm a part of it in whatever capacity that I, I'm part of something that uh, is, and it's 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 like the heart to the heart, right? Like it feels close to the heart, and then it feels like those who are taking the classes, those who are helping to organize the volunteers, that it, that it feels like a family, alhamdulillah. And so it's different than just like a class that you come, you take. You take some notes and then you leave and that's that's the extent of the relationship. But it feels like this is something that continues. I remember, you know, some of the classes, you know, one of the classes that I taught virtually up until today, you know, we had a telegram group up until today, subhanAllah, the brothers and the sisters are so active in it. And it shows that this is something that like they're invested in. This is something that they're carrying with them. They're still applying. And so it becomes something where if I'm investing in this, I know I'm investing in something that will have this long-term impact. You know, like Sheikh Suleiman said, the tip of the iceberg, but imagine what's under that. And it reminded me, you know, a person you don't know, you think I'm supporting this and I'm giving however much I can give and what's what impact is that going to have? But the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that reminds us of one of the continuous charities that you give is knowledge that is benefited from. And you don't know that maybe that's the thing that you come on the day of judgment that you think was just a date as the hadith says, but you come on the day of judgment and it's like the mountain of Uhud. It's like the mountain of Uhud, the investment and just the practical return on that investment that you already see. And only Allah knows what will be on the day of judgment as well. Allahu Akbar. And you know, subhanAllah, uh, Sheikh Suleiman mentioned something actually earlier as well in regards to the online. Now, you, mashallah, you were teaching classes when, you know, especially during the pandemic, you know, a lot of people during that time were rushing to, you know, present content online and trying to make, you know, knowledge accessible to people. But alhamdulillah, Al-Maghrib Institute was already ahead of the curve. Al-Maghrib Institute has already invested in this huge, massive online library through Faith Essentials, through the online courses, through online, you know, things like this, through Ramadan 360, where students are engaged online throughout the entire year. So, Jazakallah khair on behalf of all of us as students, Sheikh, for your wonderful uh, efforts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in Ramadan Mubarak and at soon Eid Mubarak as well. SubhanAllah. Time is running fast, Sheikh. Looks like that shirt is an Eid shirt. I'm I'm just like zero. <laughs> you know, I'm African, so every day is Eid for me. You know, I just uh, mashallah, I just you know got colors on for no reason. But alhamdulillah, let's okay. give a big round of I hope this works now. People telling me they can't hear my applause. Can you hear this now? Can they hear the applause? I don't know. It doesn't seem like they can. But Zakallah Khair, Sheikh Umar Hadraj, mashallah, for that wonderful insight. And again, please continue to donate, inshallah. Go to almaghrib.org slash donate. 
this is an opportunity for you to invest in this amazing institute during this blessed month of Ramadan. You know the impact. You are all students of Al Maghrib. You know how Al Maghrib has changed your life. It's personally changed my life. So inshallah, we can change the lives of many more students around the world by continuing to invest in this wonderful institution. I'm getting some threatening uh, WhatsApp messages that I'm going to respond to very shortly. In the meantime, inshallah, we'd like to invite our next speaker, one of the OG instructors, mashallah, tabarakallah. Now there is ikhtilaf here. I should point this out. You know, some people question whether Sheikh Yasser Bajaz was the second instructor, if he was the third instructor. Allahu alam. Now, this has been lost in the tales of history. We don't know for sure. But we do know that, mashallah, we are blessed to be joined by Sheikh Yasser Bajaz, who's joining us here live. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. I want to second Sheikh Omar's, uh, uh, mashallah, comment. It seems to be that you already have Eid on your shirt, mashallah. <laughs> Yes, Sheikh. Got all these bright clothes. I got all these lights and colors behind me. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Just trying to keep myself awake. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbi. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How's, how's Ramadan been for you so far, Sheikh? Well, beautiful. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan is as always. We say Ramadan Kareem. It means very generous. Subhanahu the generosity of Ramadan is, is all over the place. Fadlullah to Baraka wa Ta'ala. In terms of the kindness of the people, mashallah, the generosity of the people. Alhamdulillah, the blessings in the time from the light to Barakah wa Ta'ala, it's all beautiful. I ask Allah subhanahu wa to make it also generous to everybody around us, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ameen, Ya Rab. Ameen, Ya Rab. Zakallah khair, Sheikh. We'll let you get started, inshallah, and we'll chat a little bit afterwards. Bismillah. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, sallallahu wa sallam, wa baraka wa nabiyyana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, tasliman kathiratun ma ma ba'd. So the dua that I have for you comes from Surah Al-Anbiya. Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 1, ayat uh, 89 and 90. Again, that's Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 20, 21 verses 89 and 90. And that is the dua of uh, Zakaria. The dua of Zakaria in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reports to us what Zakaria asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for when he says, قَالْ وَزَكَرِيَا إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَلَا تَذَرْنِي فَرْدًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْوَارِثِينَ When Zakaria asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Lord, do not leave me alone. Like he said, Ya Rabbi, my Lord, do not leave me childless, alone, without any children. And you are the best of all the successors. And Allah says, So we answered his call. And we've granted him Yahya as his son. And we made his wife fertile. In that age, of course, at such a very old age. Because they, he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, used to race and doing good call upon us with hope and fear, totally humbling themselves before us. This is one of the most profound ayat as a conclusion of a series of ayat that came before it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anbiya spoke about different stories of the Anbiya. But of all the Anbiya he spoke about, he mentioned four Anbiya particularly, four Anbiya who made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah azza wa jal, he showed us how he responded to their dua, and the dua, the answer came swiftly. So the message I want to give you from this, inshallah ta'ala, is this, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the call. When Allah azza wa jal says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ When your Lord said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, call me and I will respond to you. He means it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the response is always swift. The response is always there. Even if we don't see it with our own eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it done already for us. And here's the example of these four anbiya, inshallah. The first one is Prophet Nuh السلام, in the same surah, Surah Al-Anbiya. Prophet Nuh in Ayah 76, Chapter 21, 76, Allah Azza wa Jal says, he called upon his Lord, he cried to his Lord, من قبل, وَنُوحًا إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ إِذْ نَادَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فق, uh, وَنُوحًا إِذْ نَادَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ Allah Subh'ana says that Nuh, he called from before, which means before all the Anbiya that were mentioned before that, قال, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا له. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we responded to him, and we answered his call. Now, I want you to notice something about that word, inshallah ta'ala, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا له. فَنَجَّيْنَا And Allah says, we have rescued him and his family, and Allah subhanahu mentioned how he did that afterwards. The second example that was mentioned in the ayat is the example of Ayyub. Ayyub alayhi salam, and I know Sister Rasmi, she's going to be speaking more details on this. قَالَ تَعَالَى وَأَيُّوبَ وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ When Ayyub, he called upon his Lord, أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الضُّرُ Ya Allah, I've been afflicted with a calamity, with a crisis. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ 
And he said, we answered his call. He says, and we answered his prayer, his call. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ And we removed all the hardship that he has been going through. The third prophet that Allah subhanahu mentioned to us here, قَالْ وَذَنُّونِ إِذَّهَبَ مُغَادِبًا Yunus. Yunus alayhi salam, he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remember when the man of the well, the noon, stormed off from his people. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَظَنَّ أَلَّا نَقْدِرْ عَلَيْهِ He thought that we're not going to be uh, uh, reaching to him. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He kept calling during the night, or the, or the darkness of, of, uh, uh, of the belly of the whale and the darkness of the ocean. And he used to say, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al O Allah, there is no God worthy of worship but you. Inni kuntu min al I have certainly done wrong. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا lah," And we answered his call. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ Then came Zakaria. وَزَكَرِيَّا إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ رَبِّي لَا تَذَرْنِي فَرْدًا وَانْتَخَرُ الْوَارِثِينَ Zakaria says, my Lord, my Lord, don't leave me childless. And you are the best of the successors. And Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا lah," And we answered his call. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَا وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَا We grant him his child Yahya and we have amended the affair of his wife and made her fertile. Now, what is the word that was repeated over and over again in all these four examples? I want to see if you guys can answer this in the chat, inshallah. The word that was mentioned in every dua over here and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to him. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ There you go. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ which means, and we have answered this call. But the English language doesn't really give the, the haq for the Arabic word, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَا Because of the Arabic language, the article fa, the article fa, is actually, is, has two meanings here. Number one is a, is a sequence, meaning it's actually, it comes right after that immediately. And number three, and number two actually is a swiftness. So the first one is that it is a sequence. So it comes right after the dua, Allah says, First Jamla, and we answered his call. So the answer came after the dua, but also means a swiftness, meaning there was no gap between the dua that was done and the response that came right after that. The dua was made and the answer came right after that. First Jabnala, first Jabnala, first Jabnala. Immediately, if in each dua that Allah mentioned to us in the dua of Nuh alayhi salam, the dua of Ayyub, the dua of, uh, of, of Yunus, the dua of Zakaria, Allah says they made the dua, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ Immediately responded to their dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always swift in responding to the dua subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If they ask you, if the servant, my servant asks you about me, I am near. That kind of, you know, closeness, that proximity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about over here, comes in the way Allah responds to the dua swiftly. Now again, some of us might say, but wait a minute, I mean, I've been making dua all these days, what I'm not getting is what I'm asking for. Well, the dua that Allah, the way Allah answered does not necessarily give you what you're asking for, but Allah giving you subhanahu wa ta'ala what you need, not what you want. And what you need, but are different than what you're asking for. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he delays the answer to this call, it doesn't mean he wasn't answering you. He was answering you in your own favor. Probably maybe you're asking for something that might be hurtful, harm, harmful to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delaying that by answering and giving you something different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he might be giving you something completely the opposite of what you're asking for as a means to strengthen you probably because this is what you really need. Not convenience of what you're asking for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might choose even to delay the answer completely to the akhirah so you can get the reward for it in the akhirah. All these are examples the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the hadith for us how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the call. But what we learn from the word فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ is the answer is immediate and swift comes swiftly after that. But it requires a lot, lot of, lot of iman and a lot of yaqeen that the dua that I call, the dua that I'm, I'm making to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, he listens and he answers the call. It requires a lot of iman and a lot of faith in that. But then, how did Allah subhanahu why would Allah azza wa jal answer the call of these anbiya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us three qualities. These three qualities I want you to observe and I want you to think about so you can make your dua also being answered so swiftly. How can I make my dua being answered so swiftly? There are three qualities were mentioned in the ayah number 90. Again, chapter 21, ayah 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qal, fastajabna lah. We answered his call. That's the career now. Wa wahabna lahu yahya. And we have granted him yahya. Wa aslahna lahu zawja. And made his wife fertile. And then he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, now why he answered their call so swiftly? Qal, innahum. كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رهبا رغبا ورهبا وكانوا لنا خاشعين because they have these three qualities number one he says قال إنهم كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات 
they used to race in doing good deeds. What's the meaning of yusari'una fil khayrat? They didn't wait for the opportunities to arrive to give to do good. No, they were raised. They were looking for these opportunities. They were actually chased after these golden opportunities so they can give that khayr. That they always want to do something good. So some of us might be waiting there and waiting for an opportunity when someone asks them for donation and they raise their hand and they give. Others, they look, where can I give my charity? How, how, where is it now? The last 10 nights are starting. Okay, I'm not going to wait for the opportunity to, to arrive. I'm going to look for the right opportunity, inshallah, to baraka wa ta'ala, and see what I can do about this. So you say, fil khayrat. That's number one. You don't wait for the opportunity to come. They go after these opportunities and they chase and they raise for these good opportunities, inshallah. Ta'ala. And you're having right now a golden opportunity coming your way, inshallah, ta'ala, by giving to Al Maghrib Institute. Don't wait for the opportunities to come next time. This is the moment for it, inshallah. Ta'ala. The second thing he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, qan, raghaban wa rahaba. And they used to call us out of hope and out of fear. You see, the Prophet وسلم, mentioned in the hadith that those who, who ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during time of prosperity and time of ease, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for them in terms of difficulties and hardship. Like those who are used to make the dua in terms of goodness. Because subhanAllah, most of us, when we make dua, and as a matter of fact, when people come and ask for a dua, what do they ask for? They only ask when there's something going on. They ask when they have a problem. They ask when someone is sick or ill. Could you please make dua for my mom because she's ill? Could you make dua for this because you know they have gone through difficulty? SubhanAllah, a lot of us, they think of the dua as a response to a crisis. And that's why, unfortunately, we lose a lot of khairat on the subject of dua. You need to understand that dua in itself is an act of ibadah. As a matter of fact, the Prophet says, dua huwa al-ibadah. The dua is ibadah itself, is the essence of worship. Why? Because what's the essence of worship? The essence of worship is you acknowledge your servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do you do that? You do that by showing him your poverty, your need, and your dependence on him. Because if you show your independence of him, you're just telling, telling him that you're ghani. You're not you're rich, you're self-sufficient, you're self-independent, you don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the dua, no matter how, how wealthy you are, how smart you are, how strong you are, if you still make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are telling your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, these things don't matter to me, ya Rabbi, because they don't own me. I own these things. I still need you. I'm in need of you. Kama qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the story of uh, Musa alayhi salam when he was running from the Pharaoh and he ended up in, in Median. And as we, he helped these two little two, two girls helping with him with their, with their sheep. And then as he was returning back again, retiring back to that shade of that tree in a foreign land, in a foreign uh, uh, culture, uh, God knows how safe he is in that moment and had absolutely no positions, nothing. Remember, he used to live a, a lord in the, in, the, in the palace of the Pharaoh. Salah right now, he, he, is, uh, he is being chased out and he's now a fugitive in their, in their, in their, in their eyes and he's in, in, in a completely different situation. So it's a distressful situation. He went back to that tree and he says, Qala Rabbi, inni nima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. My Lord, I'm in need of whatever khayr that you can send me. Like I am in poverty of your khayr, of your blessing, my Lord. And Allah subhanahu says that immediately, فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَى مَا تَمْشِي عَلَى استحياء. One of those two girls, she came to him, she said, my Lord, is, uh, my father is asking you to come, uh, to come. He would like to reward you for your service. And what happened? He got married. Now he had a social life. Alhamdulillah, he had a family. Now he had a, a 10 years uh, uh, job security contract with his father-in-law. And he became, he became, alhamdulillah, wealthy and safe. And instantly, the dua was answered instantly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Musa alayhi salam. So here, Allah says, Raghaban wa rahaba, that you, you call your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala at times of ease, and Allah will answer at times of difficulty. So you need to make dua because it's in, in itself is ibadah, regardless whether I'm going through difficulty or otherwise, I always need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my life. And the third one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qal, wa kanu lana khashi'een, and they used to be humble. And they used to be humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They humbled themselves before Allah azza wa jal. If, if, uh, if you know, remember the ayat from Surah Al-Furqan when Allah spoke about uh, Ibadur Rahman. He says, Wa Ibadur Rahman. And he speaks about the servants of the most merciful. What is the first quality that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned about the Ibadur Rahman, the servant of the most merciful? Do you guys remember that? Wa Ibadur Rahman. What did he say about them? Anyone knows? Let me see in the, in the chat. Wa Ibadur Rahman. 
they walk humbly on earth. When the foolish speak to them, they say peace. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights of all the beautiful quality that came afterward in for Ibadul Rahman, He said they were humble. They're humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They deal with people with humbleness and humility as well too. And subhanAllah, in a time like ours, in a culture like ours, this is completely forgotten these days. It's all about me. Everybody wants to become the celebrity of themselves on their social media. It's all about self-promotion. So it's there are a lot of lot of ego, a lot of pride, a lot of arrogance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that's not what it is. Ibad al-Rahman, yamshuna al ardi hawna, they walk with humbleness and humility. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa lana khashi'in, and they used to humble themselves to the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, from the du'a of Zakaria and the du'a of Ayyub and Yunus and du'a of Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, fastajabna lah, and we immediately swiftly answered their call if you want your call to be answered so swiftly they remember these three qualities. They always raise to do good. Their dua is always there, regardless of their circumstances, whether it's time of ease or time of difficulty. And they humble themselves before the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, for the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah make us among those who always call upon the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and always rush to do good deeds, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and those who humble themselves to the, to the world, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this very moment that Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate their sufferings. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to confirm their iman in their hearts, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah to restore peace and tranquility into their hearts, into their lives, and the livelihoods, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to protect them against the oppressor. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them victory against those who oppress them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deliver them out of this out of this trial with victorious and with triumph, Ya Rabbil Alameen, in this dunya and in the akhirah. Wallahu ta'ala Ameen, Ameen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Zakam al and Sheikh Yasser Bajaz, mashallah, for that beautiful insight. You know, you mentioned a lot of really important points. I think for many of us in this blessed month of Ramadan, like so many people, you know, we're doing good. People are fasting. They are, you know, giving in, in charity. They're praying more. But you have, mashallah, so many causes, so many different work that you do. You know, you have, mashallah, Valley Ranch, your beautiful masjid. Why is it that you continue to invest your time in Al Maghrib Institute, knowing that there are so many different causes you can support? Why does Al Maghrib still have such a close place in your heart? Because I'm selfish. <laughs> and seriously, I'm selfish because I need my charity tree to be to expand even bigger and bigger and bigger. Inshallah. Subhanallah, the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Shaykh Omar, she he talked about earlier actually, he said that Prophet said three things will continue after long you're gone from this world. All your book of deeds will stop except for these three things. He says, قال, جاري, running charity. Mm -hmm. Beneficial knowledge that you leave behind. Or a righteous child will make dua for you. Mm -hmm. You will have all of this when you fulfill, inshallah, this, uh, uh, this requirement for the Maghrib Institute. Because when you give, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, number one, you continue with running charity. Mm -hmm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless Sheikh Muhammad al Sharif for the, for the khayr that he brought to the, to the world, not just to us, alhamdulillah, through the Maghrib Institute. That is now his running charity, and I'm selfish as well. I want this to continue for myself and for him and for everybody that is actually, alhamdulillah, contributing to this cause, bin ta'ala. As long as this martial institute is moving and the khair is, is, is continuing to be to spread around the world, you will always reap the reward for it, bin Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, beneficial knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I believe that everybody knows, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, what Al Maghrib stands for and what is it all about? It's to really to maximize the benefit of ilm and knowledge, alhamdulillah, whether through the in, in, uh, online courses, on site courses, the the the, the khayr that spread through these the seminars and webinars and and and, uh, and and ilm nights and and so much khayr, alhamdulillah, goes through bin Allah to baraka wa ta'ala. That's a beneficial knowledge, alhamdulillah, we all benefit from and share, share the reward for it. And the last word in Salah, a righteous child will make dua for them. It doesn't have to be your child. But someone will become in that kind of, you know, uh, a position in your life when they remember their teachers, when they remember their, their uh, you know, their, their, their brothers and sisters who got into this khair, alhamdulillah, and they make dua, says, Masha, may Allah reward Sheikh Muhammad for doing this. May Allah reward Brother Buna for helping us with that. May Allah remember this, this fulan, fulan. So it's really, it's all about um, building your own charity tree. So for me, it's really, it's a selfish cause. I, I would love to reap the khair for it in the dunya and the akhirah, inshallah, and I want each and every one of us, when it comes to the, to the akhirah, it's a competition. 
This is one of those beautiful causes that inshallah ta'ala, you find so much joy and so much fulfillment when you educate somebody uh, in their deen, alhamdulillah, how much higher you will reap yourself. And subhanallah, uh, I'm a strong believer that when you educate people, I hope that educated people make better decisions, inshallah azza wa jal. Allah. You know, Shaykh, you mentioned something so beautiful, subhanAllah. The fact that all of us have a role to play in the da'wah, right? Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. our wonderful instructors, teachers like yourselves who are able to implement and teach that knowledge. You have people like myself who, you know, whatever capacity I'm able to help out with. But there are people behind the scenes, subhanAllah, just like the ones who are watching right now, who are the engines behind what we're able to do because they're able to donate, they're able to help fuel this amazing machine that is spreading this beautiful message to millions of people around the world. So, inshallah, mm -hmm. you know, we should also come Compete with our teachers, mashallah. We don't want them to get all the reward. Sheikh, as Sheikh Yasser said, he's very, you know, selfish for his ajr. We should be selfish as well, inshallah, because, you know, we don't want them to get all the reward. We want to support them, inshallah, so we can get a share of that reward. And anyone that benefits, anyone who becomes a better person, Sheikh, you know, I'm a testament to that in my own life, subhanAllah. The no. fact that I'm an Amalgam student, the fact that I've been able to benefit from your classes, I know, subhanAllah, even remember, you know, sitting in, in some of your early classes for myself, you know, for many people in the chat, they will, they will understand this, the, the, the way in which we're able to connect to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way in which we're able to, you know, become better people. Wallahi, this is something that, you know, no amount of money can put a price tag to, but alhamdulillah, you know, we actually have on the giving levels, if you go to almagrib.org slash donate, you'll see the different giving levels. And one, you know, they're actually all named after, most of them are named after Sahabas. Now, I have a little bit of a selfish request here. One of the Sahabas that's named here is Hassan ibn Thabit. Allahu Akbar. Hassan ibn Thabit. There's a picture of myself right there, as you can see, mashallah, my big smile on my face. Um, oh, wait a second. Hey, is that, that's, that wasn't me. That was Sheikh Ammar. My bad. Same thing. All right, keep going down. <laughs> you look at, you know, keep going down, inshallah, because I have a selfish request myself. Okay, keep going down. Keep going down. Keep going down. Masha Allah, there you go, Hassan ibn Thabit. I would like for someone, inshallah, because right now there's only one miskeen supporter who supported this amazing, you know, Sahaba, Hassan ibn Thabit, who was the poet of the Prophet, والسلام, who defended Islam using art. This is a, a personal, you know, favorite of mine, but, uh, you know, I hope someone can help support Hassan ibn Thabit, inshallah, the, the Hassan ibn Thabit level of giving and go a little bit further down as well. Because there's one at the very bottom that is just right now getting no love that Uthman ibn Affan, subhanAllah. I know there's probably an Uthman watching right now. Somebody named Uthman, somebody who is Uthman in their family, something like that. I want to see at least a few of these, inshallah. Okay, by the end of this webinar, I hope there are from some brave people, 5,000 Canadian. If I start doing the math in different currencies, I won't be able to do the math for you. But, you know, whatever that amount is, if you understand the background, the importance of spreading this, this beautiful religion, if you understand the thousands, if not millions of people who have benefited, this amount is not too high. Right, This amount is something that you can make a commitment for today. It's an amount that you can pledge over a, a period of uh, you know, a certain amount of months or a year, however you feel comfortable, inshallah. But every single dollar that you give for this amazing cause, it is a benefit for yourself. As Sheikh Yasser mentioned, subhanAllah. And one of the hadith that I always reference you know, when we talk about charity is the fact that Prophet ﷺ taught us that your sadaqah will come forth for you on the day of judgment and be a shade, Allahu Akbar, a shade on the day when there is no shade but his shade. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us on that day. You know, people will begin to drown in their own sweat, subhanAllah. People who will be standing there because the sun will feel so close and they will feel the pressure of the sun and so they will begin to sweat. But for those who have, mashallah, planted this donation tree that have, you know, had their sadaqah, planted on the earth, then their sadaqah will come forth for them and provide shade. Allahu Akbar. Today we are giving away shade. If somebody wants to benefit themselves on that day, then this is an amazing cause that you can donate towards. Almagrib.org slash donate. Make a contribution now while you're fasting. Make a contribution in this blessed month. While the days are still amongst us, inshallah, we're going to talk more about this amazing cause and we're going to introduce you to some of our amazing speakers. Before we do that, we want to play a very short video to give you more insight into this amazing program. And we'll be back right after this. A lot of the higher education when it came to Islamic studies was like you had to travel overseas to get it, right? Um, and it was only a handful of people who could do this. Now, alhamdulillah, what one of the things that Maghrib is doing is making it accessible to everyone, both on site as well as online. Whether you're teaching a weekend with Al-Maghrib or a double weekend with Al-Maghrib or an evening with Al-Maghrib or online with Al-Maghrib, that emphasis of the experience is unlike anything that I've seen anywhere else. Make sure that you also support Al-Maghrib in whatever way that you can. Because remember, supporting an institute of knowledge 
is to support oneself first and foremost. Whoever does good will get better than it. Because what you get from Allah will be better than what you give in His cause. The Maghrib's belief is that Islam should be easy and accessible. And its focus is on grassroots. It's not focused on creating a scholarly class. It's not focused on a very niche group of individuals. But it's for the everyday Muslim. And then number two, the way that we go about it, the approach that we have is by looking at what are the problems that people have and in learning Islam, what are the problems that people have in learning Islam and then going out and solving those problems. One of the most important uh, aspects of the real values, the culture of the Maghrib Institute is that nobody gets turned away and it's always been like that. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You know, one of the beautiful things about Al Maghrib Institute is that it really does support people in all aspects of their lives and all aspects and, you know, points of their Islamic learning journey. You have people, mashallah, who, you know, maybe new Muslims, people that have never prayed before, have never learned their deen, who are coming to classes, who are feeling that support, who are feeling that community. That's such a beautiful thing. And, you know, a lot of the instructors spoke about it earlier that, that sense of family. Al Maghrib for many of us is a family. Alhamdulillah, for me, it is a family as well. And I'm just honored to be joined by all of you here today. Over a thousand zooming in, zooming in, did I say? Well, whatever. They're zooming in on Zoom. And then all those who are watching on YouTube, mashallah, continue to support this amazing cause. Go to almaghrib.org slash donate. Make a contribution, no matter how big or small. If you give $1 and it's what you can give, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you. But I know there are people watching right now who are hesitating, who are thinking, you know, should I make that commitment? Should I not? I'm sure there's amazing causes you've been supporting the entire Ramadan. If it's Palestine, if it's Sudan, if it's whatever humanitarian causes. Some people think it's this or that. No, right? You can give to every cause. Share khair wherever you are. Help this cause, help that cause, help Al Maghrib Institute, and help yourself by donating in this blessed month, inshaAllah. I'd like to invite my co host, my co anchor, for this amazing session, Sister Hafsa, who's also joining in live from Toronto. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Buna, how are you? Oh, I like the flowers behind you. I like the nice... You've been... You haven't been around. We've been we've been pulling this off every day. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan 360 crew. Alhamdulillah. Hey, shout out to all the 360 students. Where are you at in the chat? Make some noise, mashallah. All those Let us know you're here. Part mashallah. of the 360 program. Today is day what for you? 360. It feels like probably day... Three, it feels like day 360 <laughs> probably, like day right? 360. Yeah, it's day I, 20 today, inshallah, inshallah, which is still on after this. Yes. So right after this program, inshallah, you can also join in. And I've seen some people chatting in the chat asking about when this will be live. It's actually live right now. This program <laughs> is being recorded. It is live on YouTube as well. Alhamdulillah. You'll be able to watch it again in the in the in the future, inshallah. But Sister Hafsa, you are mashallah doing an amazing job through 360. May Allah bless you. I'll allow you to take over this session and I'll jump in a little bit later, inshallah. Bismillah. Sounds amazing. Jazakumullah khair. That's a hard act to follow. Those fancy clap machines and all that hype and that energy. But it's lovely to be back with you guys. Mashallah. Great to see so many familiar names. Farida and Raga and Maymuna and well, Fasleen, obviously from the crew. Nada and everybody else. Mashallah. Jazakumullah khair for joining us daily in Ramadan for our 360 programming. I'm just here for, for a portion of this. We're going to keep things moving, inshallah. We're going to keep the energy high. But I hope that you guys have benefited immensely so far. I've been writing down my own gems and I'm like, bam, bam, bam. There's just, they're coming out of every corner, mashallah, tabarakallah. The speakers so far have been amazing. Brother Buna, I will not pretend like I can follow him as a host, but, you know, we do what we can. The, 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 our, our predecessors set the stage, set the energy for us, and we do our best to keep up with it. I grew up, you know, watching Brother Buna and his poetry as a kid. I grew up watching most of these speakers as well, subhanAllah. So it's very crazy. Al Maghrib's journey impacts all of us, just like Buna said when he, you know, that that, that this has been part of his own journey and his, his growth as a Muslim. It's been a huge part of my own. And alhamdulillah, the next speaker that we have coming on uh, is a huge part of my own and yours. I hope that that, that you guys have been benefiting from Sada from some time. Um, I'm honored to invite our next teacher. She's been a role model. She's been an inspiration for women in the, in the West and all over the globe, mashallah. She's an established teacher of the Quran with a focus on tafsir and world word analysis. And she's been instilling the love of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with students all around the globe and with her genius examples, her anecdotes, her little relatable quips, alhamdulillah. And I've had the pleasure of bugging her every single day for the last like 19, 20 days in Ramadan 360. And I'm very honored to bring her on to our program today for our accepted du'a webinar. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ustada Taymiyyah. How are you doing? 
Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, your reflections today, inshallah. <laughs> don't, don't put me on the spot just yet. Oh, but... oh, oh today you're, you, you're definitely going to speak, don't inshallah. Don't scare me, I'm going to disappear. <laughs> All right, let's jump right in. I'm very right, excited to begin. hear your du'as. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Safat, وَلَقَدْ نَادَانَا نُوحٌ فَلَنِعْمَ الْمُجِيبُونَ And Nuh alayhi salam called upon us, and we are the best of responders. Nuh alayhi salam called upon Allah azza wa jal, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of those who respond. Because no one responds better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَأَهْلَهُ مِنَ الْكَرْبِ الْعَظِيمِ We saved him and his family from the great affliction. And this great affliction was not just the flood that came, but it was what Nuh السلام, was experiencing when he was among his people, their constant denial. We learn in the Quran that Nuh السلام, called his people to the worship of Allah alone. He called them Laylan wa Nahara, night and day. But this only increased them in Firara, in fleeing from him even more, in avoiding him even more. And when he spoke to them, they put their fingers in their ears and they covered themselves with their clothes so that they wouldn't be able to see him. So then he called out to them loudly and he spoke to them publicly. He spoke to them privately, but they disobeyed him. They ridiculed him and they plotted to harm him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that in Surah Qamar. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ The people of Nuh alayhi salam denied. فَكَذَّبُوا عَبْدَنَا They denied our slave. وَقَالُوا مَجْنُونٌ وَزْدُجِرٌ And they called him a madman. They called him crazy. They said, you've gone insane. And he was rebuked by them. He was threatened by them. So what did Nuh alayhi salam do? فَدَعَا رَبَّهُ He called upon his Lord. Because what else could he do now? And he said, أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ Indeed, I am overpowered. So please help. In his dua, he states just two things. And these two things are, first, his own condition, and second, his request to Allah. He describes his condition. He says, Anni maghlubun. I am maghlub. I have been overcome. I have been overpowered by my people. And then his request, Fantasir, please help. Please send help. And sometimes a person may feel like they have maxed out, that there is nothing, nothing more that they can do, or at least nothing more they know they can do to achieve their goals or to better their situation. A person thinks that they don't have the power to do anything more. And literally, you feel like you are overcome, maghloob. You may feel like you're overcome by your circumstances. You may feel like you're overcome by your own bad decisions, right? The consequences of your own, uh, your own bad decisions that you've made in the past. You may feel like you're overcome by debt, by illness, by pain, by your responsibilities. And you feel like you have no other option. You don't know what to do next. You feel like you have no more power. You don't even know if you have the power to do anything. And when people feel like this, many people make the mistake of calling it quits. They just give up. Or they fall into despair. They think it's all over. But this is a huge mistake. Because no matter how weak and how incapable and how defeated we find ourselves, we have the power to call upon Allah Azza wa Jal. 
That is our greatest strength. The power to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we call upon Allah, that is when things change for the better. Sometimes we put in way too much effort in working. We tire ourselves in working. But we should tire ourselves in supplicating as well, in calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Nuh alayhi salam called out to Allah that Anni maghlubun fantasi. O Lord, I am overpowered, so please help. And look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to his dua. He says, فَفَتَحْنَا أَبُوَابَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا مُنْهَمِرْ Then we open the gates of the heaven with rain pouring down. Imagine, gates of the sky are opened up and rain is pouring down endlessly. وَفَجَّرْنَا الْأَرْضَ عُيُونًا And we cause the earth to burst with springs. So imagine, water coming down from above and coming out from below. وَحَمَلْنَاهُ عَلَى ذَاتِ أَلْوَاحٍ وَدُسُرٍ And Allah says, we carried him on something that was made of planks and nails, meaning a ship. تَجْرِي بِأَعْيُنِنَا جَزَاءً لِمَنْ كَانَ كُفِرٍ It was sailing under our observation as reward for the one who was denied. Nuh السلام, was denied by his people. But when he called upon Allah, his Lord did not deny him. His Lord answered him so very generously. So when you feel like you've reached your limit, you don't know what more you can do. You don't even think you can do anything else. You have exhausted all of your efforts and you have waited so long. You have worked so hard for so long and you don't know what else to do. This is not the time to call it quits. This is the time to call upon Allah more and more. And just describe your state before Allah like Nuh salam did. Anni maghloob. Ya Rabb, I feel defeated. Ya Rabb, I feel completely overcome. I don't know what else to do. Fantasir, so help. Call upon Allah. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to give you what he wants to give you what he what he wants to help you with may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to tire ourselves in calling upon him just as we tire ourselves in working and striving towards our goals may our yaqeen in our duas be stronger than our yaqeen in our own limited efforts ameen inshallah i will conclude over here hafsa back to you for that beautiful reminder and for jumping in and joining us for this blessed webinar. It's been such a pleasure to have you with us. Before you leave, I just want to ask you, and subhanAllah, you're one of the, the, the faces or the names I think of who's been super dedicated to Maghrib ever since you joined the experience. And mashallah, we see more and more of you. We see you in virtual seminars. We see we have the, the, the rare opportunity to see you in site, on site in some places in Dallas, inshallah, in the UK. Um, so I want to ask you, what is it that makes you commit a lot of your time and your energy to Al Maghrib. There's so many organizations out there. There's so many massages. There's so many programs. Why do you choose Al Maghrib? Um, I think the simple answer is accessibility and um, relevance. Uh, I feel like Al Maghrib is accessible for me as an instructor and also for many students. It's accessible online, on site, especially with faith essentials. You need there's so much that you can access, alhamdulillah. And relevance. Mm -hmm. I feel like whatever is taught at Al Maghrib is very, very practical and relevant. It's not theoretical. It's not, uh, you know, from the distant past that you know that seems impractical. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. So, um, yeah, the, these are the two main reasons. Beautifully summarized. Jazakum al khair, Salat I'll bug you in a couple of hours, inshallah, inshallah in our daily Ramadan three hundred and sixty program. Take care. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah.
Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. That was Ustada Damia Zubair. Um, Alhamdulillah, we've had so many amazing speakers come on and benefit us so far in our programming for today's Accepted Dua webinar. Hopefully you've received some inspiration, some motivation to get your du'as in line and to jump in uh, strong in these last 10 nights that are starting for many of us tonight, subhanAllah. Um, it's crazy to think how quickly the time has gone. And now we're kind of preparing to end this month strong to do as much as we can. And Jazakum al to so many of you who've already made this experience part of your commitment, who've already been giving generously to, to Amagrib uh, through our Give Daily program. May Allah reward you and make it accepted and make it heavy on your skills. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, but of course, as we've mentioned, now you have an opportunity to maximize that inshallah in the last 10 nights and to really jump in and uh, you know, go into the, the the last ten nights with our daily automated donations for 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 Give Daily, and we also have the giving levels that Brother Buna had introduced you guys. Shout out to there's two people, Mashallah, may Allah grant you Jannah, Amin, Rabbil Alamin, who have given so far uh, to the thousand giving level that Brother Buna was really connected to. Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah Khair to Sister Prislin, who's dropped that link here in the chat for us as well. Uh, and I want to say, Subhanallah, we were mentioning scholarships earlier. We were mentioning the one click scholarships, and those are. Honestly, one of the things I've been most excited about since we joined, since I joined Al Maghrib, something that I've been really hoping to push because I know it's very hard. There's scholarship donations and funding that we make available, but then it becomes difficult when someone is applying for scholarships. We used to have very lengthy forms that they would have to explain their situation and kind of bear their souls to make sure that we were doing, uh, you know, that, that we we're giving scholarship donations to the right place. And we had limited donations because of your generosity over the last few years that has completely changed. Alhamdulillah. Now we have the ability to be a lot more, you know, generous with our, with our scholarships. We're able to hit the main areas where people are constantly applying, which is single mothers, uh, students, and, those who are facing financial difficulty and even others who don't fall into those categories. So Jazakumullah for making it possible. Please keep giving. Amagrib.org forward slash donate is the link. And we look forward to continuing the program. Our next speaker, I'm really honored to bring on as well. I got lucky, alhamdulillah. I got a lot of the female speakers. I was trying to get everybody stacked back to back as well, because mashallah, they're mentors, they're, they're inspirations for myself as well. And as we see, mashallah, there's a huge percentage of the Maghrib and the global kind of Muslim knowledge seeking audience is women. Women are the powerhouses of this ummah, mashallah, tabarakallah. And Usada Yasmin Mujahid, mashallah, has been one of our biggest inspirations. She specializes in areas of spirituality and relationships and psychology. You guys have probably been benefiting from her for a long time since she became our first uh, female inst instructor at Maghrib. She's launched a couple of but like you know banger books, mashallah, bestsellers, uh, Reclaim Your Heart and recently Healing the Emptiness. And mashallah, she's been touring with us last year and this year, and she's launching a new tour very soon. Look out for that. But without further ado, I want to bring on Ustada Yasmin Mujahid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Ustada. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Well. Alhamdulillah. You know what? I want to bring up the elephant in the room. We're twinning. This I know. Is the <laughs> this is the same hijab that you're wearing. I'm just wearing it as a as a neck thing. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It, did you did you get it from RIS? I bought it. I bought oh. it as soon as you told me where you got yours. Subhanallah. Yeah. See, you're always guiding us to haq. You're always guiding us <laughs> to making good decisions. Mashallah. All right. Oh. I'm looking forward to your talk, Ustada. Cannot wait to Thank jump you. in. Let's start. Bismillah. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I pray that this Ramadan is going amazing for everyone and is a time of uh, so much benefit and yearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. So um, I want to talk about a really, really a beautiful dua and a dua that I have myself really gained a lot of inspiration from. And that is the dua of Ayyub alayhi salam. Now, Ayyub alayhi salam, we know his story. We know that uh, he went through. So before he was tested, he had, subhanAllah, been gifted with so much risk. So he was given wealth. He was he had 14 children. He was strong. He was healthy. He was respected in his community. He was, um, you know, he was just he just had all of these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. And um, it, it just so happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test Ayyub alayhi salam. And, and we know that, um, for example, Iblis was very jealous. We know that Iblis is very jealous generally of Adam and Beni Adam, right? And and so Iblis's position was thinking that 
um, you know, saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the, you know, Ayyub alayhi salam, you've given him so many gifts, that's why he praises you. But if you were to take away those gifts, he would no longer praise you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ayyub and he did in fact take away those gifts. We know that he was tested by losing wealth. He was tested and listen to this, subhanAllah, when I read, you know, when you read the, the commentators, what they say about what happened to his children, all of his children were crushed in um, when a building collapsed, subhanAllah. And you know what? It makes me think about, and this is why, subhanAllah, when we look at what's happening in Gaza right now, we see that the types of situations that we are actually witnessing are the kinds of situations we read about. And this is one of those, where he he at, he lost his children in the collapse of a building. This is what the commentators say. And subhanAllah, this is literally what we're watching happening right now. And what does Ayyub alayhi salam do? Ayyub alayhi salam, we are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continued to have sabr, he continued to have patience, and he continued to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was exactly the test. And that's what we're witnessing in real time now. And the reason I bring this up is because we read these stories in the Quran. We learn about the stories in the seerah. But oftentimes we think of them as just stories. Oh, you know, those are the people of old. And we are in fact um, honored to be able to witness something like that in real time. In fact, there are people converting right now because of witnessing that in real time you know you have you have converts people who have reverted uh because they're watching the people in palestine and saying that's how you know prophet and that's how job was described in in the vibe for example which is obviously the the english for ayub salam. so we are what we see in in prophet ayub salam is that he went through all of these calamities this loss one after the other so he lost his wealth, he lost his children, and then he lost his health. He started to become very ill. And in fact, the commentators say that he um, that he was he had this illness where even his skin was rotting and had a smell coming from it. He was so uh, he had lost his health to that level. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ayyub for seven years, one after the other, losing all of these, these um, the risk that he had been given, tested year upon year. And even in terms of turning to Allah and asking for help, he felt almost shy to ask because he had been given all of these blessings for 80 years and he was tested for seven. So he felt, you know, shy to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he does turn to Allah, and this is the dua I want to reflect on, what does he say to Allah? He says, Now this dua is so deep and so powerful. And I believe truly that this dua actually is a blueprint for the believer who goes through difficulties and trials and hardships. Now the beginning of this dua is an admission. It is, um, it is, it is Ayyub alayhi salam admitting to Allah about his pain and about his hardship. He says, which means difficulty has verily befallen me or verily indeed difficulty has befallen me. So what he's doing first is, is acknowledging the hardship. He's acknowledging the pain. He's not pretending. He's not um, suppressing, if you will. You know, sometimes we believe that sabr uh, entails the suppression of our pain. So we pretend maybe uh, or we become numb. Oh, I'm fine. I've got this. I'm strong. Uh, you know, I, 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 I can handle this. And that's actually the wrong answer because all the prophets, they got their strength from turning to Allah, not by depending on themselves. And so he's turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's acknowledging his, his pain. He's not pretending. And, you know, we, we see today this discussion in, in, in the psychological discourse about something called toxic positivity, which is interesting because 
um, essentially what they're referring to when they talk about toxic positivity is when a person is essentially in denial of the reality of their circumstance. And in order to kind of make themselves feel better or make the people around them feel better, they deny the the pain that they're in or they deny the seriousness of their reality. And that isn't helpful, right? That's someone um, who walks, you know, imagine that it's really dark outside and someone walks out and says, in the in the pitch dark, in the pitch black, says, oh, no, actually, I think it's very bright. Oh, it's so bright. Look, look how bright it is. Look, look, there's the sun. It's just not helpful because it's not the reality. And it is, you might call that positivity, but it isn't based in reality. And so therefore it's not, it's not, it's not helpful. And this is why um, it's called toxic positivity. In fact, um, we have this really powerful uh, concept in psychological discourse uh, called the Stockdale paradox. Now I want you to hold on to that term for a second, um, but I first want to finish this dua and then I want to touch upon the Stockdale paradox. So here you have the first part of his dua. His response is to be honest and real and not wear a mask and not numb and not suppress and not pretend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about his pain and about his real painful circumstances. Indeed, difficulty has befallen me. He's not pretending. But look at the second half of his dua. In the same breath, he says, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. So now, going back to the analogy of the person standing outside where it, you know, it's it's pitch black, it's dark. They're not pretending that it's light. They're acknowledging the darkness. They're saying, you know what? It, it's really dark right now. But in that same moment, they are saying, but I have full certainty that the sun will rise again. And that is what Ayyub a.s. is doing here. He is acknowledging the reality of his circumstance without pretending or numbing or suppressing. Without that toxic positivity. But at the same time, he continues to have hope. He continues to have hope. And it's very important where he's placing his hope. His hope is not being placed in himself. It's not being placed in his, um, his money. It's not being placed in his means, his own abilities. His hope is entirely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa anta arhamur rahim. And you are the most merciful of the merciful. And that dua, subhanAllah, perfect combination of reality, honesty, not suppressing, turning to Allah with the pain rather than uh, trying to depend on yourself or rather than suppressing and pretending everything's okay, but at the same time continuing to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm certain that the sun will rise again. This is my circumstance right now, but I have hope in Allah. And subhanAllah, that dua completely transformed his circumstance. Allah tells us that he was given everything back and more, waziyada, and more. Allah gave him more. And so what do we learn from this? And now I want to, inshallah, just quickly touch upon uh, the Stockdale paradox. So the Stockdale paradox um, is something that they discuss in the psychological uh, discourse about a man named Stockdale, um, who, so basically, this was a man who was tortured. Uh, he was captured as a prisoner of war, and he was he was subjected to torture for several years. I think it was about seven years of torture in 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 you know, like. Um, not for the entire seven years. He was in captivity for seven years, but he was subjected to torture several times during that period. So what happened is he was interviewed about how he survived this ordeal. And here's what he said. He talked about that his survival was dependent upon his absolute certainty that this was not the end of his story, that there would be, uh, that he would come out of this that there would be uh, a, a point in his life where he would turn and look at this and that he would he would not only survive this, but he would be able to grow from this and learn from it. So he had certainty in the fact that this wasn't the end, 
and that and that he would he would have a better uh, future. However, he was asked this question. He was asked, well, then who didn't survive? And look at what he said. And this is where the paradox comes in. He says, well, that's easy. That was the he called them the optimists, I believe. Now, he said, well, what, who were the optimists? And he explains them like this. He said, they were the ones who said, oh, you know what? We're going to be out by Thanksgiving. And then Thanksgiving came and went and they were not released. Oh, no, you know what? We're going to be out by Christmas. For sure, we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas came and went and they were not released. Oh, we'll be out, we'll be out by, by, by uh, Easter. And Easter came and went and they were not released until they died of a broken heart. And look at how deep that is. What he explains is they were not facing the actual reality of the current circumstances and they were in denial about that reality. And so they ended up dying of a broken heart in the sense that that, that disappointment crushed them because they were not being honest about the current circumstance. However, and this is where the paradox comes. He says that in order to survive, he had to be able to be honest about his current circumstances while at the same time continuing to have hope and full certainty that this was not the end of his story and that things would become better. And then I go back to the dua of Ayyub a.s. And that's exactly what Ayyub a.s. is doing here. That verily difficulty has befallen me and you are the most merciful of the merciful. He's being honest, but he does not let go of hope, even within the midst. And this was, this was when he had lost about everything. And yet he continues to have hope. أقولي قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه غفور رحيم سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك Jazakum Allah khair, Ustada Yasmin. What a powerful talk as always, subhanAllah. Um, before you go, I know you're a very busy woman. Actually, whenever I see you, I, I'm like, I don't want to have your life. I could never imagine running around around the globe from one flight to another, trying to benefit cities and communities from North America to Australia to the UK, etc. MashaAllah. I want to say though, mashallah, with that crazy schedule that you have, you're an incredibly busy woman. I've asked the other instructors as well is, is what makes you commit your precious, precious time to Al Maghrib with all the other organizations, the all the other, everybody's running around trying to get a piece of Usad Yasmin's time. Why have you gifted yourself to us? Um, honestly, I believe and I, I have really seen uh the the just the how important the work of Al Maghrib is. And and I say this having been a part of Al Maghrib uh before I was an instructor with Al Maghrib and just the, the 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 legacy that Al Maghrib is leaving behind is just so important, and I and I say this because I really truly believe uh, that Al Maghrib is grounded in the fundamentals uh, of our Deen, and at the same time has the capacity to really uh, reach people at a practical level uh, at where they are, uh, and at the same time be inclusive. So I think it's something that is very, uh, very needed and very and, and somewhat unique uh, sometimes within within our global Muslim community that sometimes we 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 can uh, go to go to sort of different camps uh, and and not be as inclusive, or we might be too inclusive and not have those fundamentals. And I think that that's what's really powerful about Al Maghrib is that it, it has those roots, but it's, it's, it's got the branches as well. And it and it really has a way of of being inclusive, trying to reach people where they're at, and also being very practical and realistic, uh, but without compromising. And that's not an easy thing to do. But I think that's something that Al Maghrib does really well. And and I and I really um, I I do feel a sense of of honor to be part of the Al Maghrib family. Alhamdulillah. And I I think I'm among very good company. Alhamdulillah. I have a lot of respect for all the instructors and 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 for yourself, Hafsa. That is slide that in there. Jazakumullah khair, Sally Yasmin. A beautiful talk. We're very excited to keep up with some of the amazing work that you have upcoming, inshallah, and we'll, and follow you globetrotting. But inshallah, we'll see you very soon. For now, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
That was Ustada Yasmin Mujahid. Gems on gems on gems. Um, please do drop and share. Continue to drop and share them into the chat as well here so that everyone else, I know some folks came in late and are crying that they missed the session. It's okay. That's why it's recorded. But share your gems for those who missed it. And I hope that you really benefited from her talk as always. Mashallah, Ustada Yasmin eats and leaves no crumbs. Mashallah. Uh, with that said, uh, I first of all, I want to give a quick shout out. I know we haven't been giving a lot of love to the YouTube fam. So shout out to all of you who are here on YouTube. I know there's you know, almost five, six hundred of you there, mashallah, as well. I see Sawibat, I see Shazia, I see Nicole, I see Karima, I see Arwa. Shout out to all of you. Jazakallah khair for being there and being so hyped there in the chat with us. Alhamdulillah. We're going to keep these sessions moving. There's so much more to benefit from. There's so much more inspiration coming your way. With our next instructor, we have Sheikh Naved Aziz, uh, who's, mashallah, been a bridge between, uh, you know, Western and Muslim communities for a very long time. His words are always an arrow to the heart. He's taught dozens of seminars throughout the years with us at Al Maghrib. And mashallah, he's worn many hats uh, in the global community and major positions in Calgary and otherwise. And we're always blessed to benefit from him, alhamdulillah. So I want to bring onto the screen Sheikh Naved Aziz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Naved coming in, as always, from your pretty background in Medina. How are you doing, Sheikh? Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, so how about yourself? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Well, I, I should say background of Medina. I know you, you've you been, uh, you know, mashallah, it's it's so realistic. People get confused every time. <laughs> I wish I was there. I wish I was there. But alhamdulillah, you know, Calgary will have to do for now. Calgary will have to do for now. I admire so, your uh, Hafsa, I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call oh. you out right now. I was listening to your conclusion with uh, Ustada Yasmin. Okay. And you're like, yeah, I, I can't handle that lifestyle of jumping on one flight to the next. <laughs> and I'm like, Hafsa's got to be kidding. She loves that lifestyle. I do, I do, but her level, mashallah, she's it's like next three level. hours True. in one place, next flight, mashallah. next flight. Just, oh, yeah, mashallah, yeah, yeah. Barakallah. it takes something else. You speakers, mashallah, speaking for one hour, speaking for two hours, three hours, while fasting, while doing all this. May Allah reward you all immensely. Love, I'm very, all of us. very honored I mean. to be in your company. All right, Sheikh, let's jump into this beautiful session. Bismillah. I can't wait to benefit from you, Bismillah. طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so inshallah for those of you that would like to follow along we're going to be starting from surah taha verse 25 to 34 surah taha verse 25 to 34 so to set the scene now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told Musa alayhi salam, idhab ila fir'auna innahu tagha, that Musa alayhi salam, look, you need to go and preach to, to, to Fir'aun. He's transcended all bounds. He's transgressed. And you need to put him in his place. Now, Musa alayhi salam, even though he's spoken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, and I want us to understand this, he has spoken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, no barrier between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's still afraid. He's still petrified. And later on in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says something very, very profound to Musa alayhi salam. He says, nafsi. I have created you for myself. I have created you for myself. Meaning that when you have been created for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you lose? Do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you achieve your goals? Do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you be victorious? Of course he will. But now we have to go through the process that Musa alayhi salam goes through. So the first of them is a psychological barrier, right? He feels an anxiety inside of himself. He feels overwhelmed. He feels burdened. So what does he do? He raises his hands to Allah. Qala rabbi shrahli sadri, that, oh Allah, expand for me my chest. And this is such a beautiful lesson that before you can physically overcome a barrier, you need to emotionally and psychologically assume and be optimistic and be positive that you can. And this is what Musa alayhi salam needed, that, oh Allah, I need to overcome this emotional and psychological barrier that I can actually approach Fir'aun, right? Now, what is it that's holding Musa alayhi salam back? Why is he so nervous? Why is he so anxious? And we get to see that. He thinks it's going to be a very, very hard and daunting task. And he's afraid of his speech impediment, that perhaps he will mock him, perhaps he will put him down, perhaps he may not even understand what he's trying to say because of his speech impediment. So let's look at these two verses over here. Make easy for me my affairs. Now, oftentimes people will tell us that, you know what, you have to embrace the hardships in Islam. Well, there's an element of truth to it, but it's not completely true. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was presented 
with two halal options, he always chose the easier of them, as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha reports. Now, there's certain circumstances in life that are going to be difficult. You can't do anything about them. At that time, you embrace the hardship. But if you have a choice, you are encouraged. The sunnah is to take the easier route. You don't self-impose hardship upon yourself. So when you have, you know, uh, we give the clear example of the process and speaking about the virtues of using cold water for wudu, right? So if you have the option of using room temperature or warm water to make wudu, you're allowed to do so. But in the circumstances where let's just say you're outside on a field trip and you have to make wudu with like fresh river water and the water is cold and you're hesitant to do so, as long as it's not harmful to you, at that time, understand that that hardship that you're going through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you even more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you even more. Verse number three, Musa alayhi salam's self-image issues, how he perceives himself, thinking that, you know what, my speech impediment is going to get in the way. He's not going to understand. People are going to mock me. And this shows us that it's normal that even the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were things that they were self-conscious about. They were things that they were worried about. And it's just human to be worried about those things. But at the end of the day, when you have a greater purpose, when you have a greater mission, you need to put those worries and anxieties aside. And here Musa alayhi salam is telling us how. By reaching out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah to uplift your anxiety, to uplift that burden from you, to make things easy for you. And that thing that you're conscious about, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resolve it. And sometimes it may actually be resolved. And in other times, the perception of it may be resolved. The perception of it may be resolved. What does that mean? Yafqahu qawli. So that they can understand my speech. So this is the worry of Musa alayhi salam that they wouldn't understand what he's trying to say. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made sure that he made dua that help me so that they can understand what I'm trying to say. Because them understanding is what is paramount. Now, this is the first part of the dua. And this is just about himself. This is just about himself. But is that where it ends? And the answer is no. Because in certain tasks in life, you don't want to be by yourself. You want to be accompanied by someone that believes in you, someone that is going to support you. And we'll take the next four or five verses together. Uh, Musa alayhi salam goes on to say, min ahli Harun akhi bihi azri wa fi amri. And grant me a helper from my family, Harun, my brother, strengthen me through him and let him share my task. Now let's break these verses down. When you have these great daunting tasks in front of you, you don't want to do them by yourself. You want to, someone to be there with you, someone that you love, someone that believes in you, someone that will help carry you and someone that will help carry your burden. As they say, when you're going through a problem, you share it with someone, it's half the problem. And when you have something to celebrate, it's twice the happiness. We are social beings. We're not meant to be isolated. We're not meant to be alone. And that is why we have to open ourselves up and allow others to help us. And Musa alayhi salam, again, he's showing us that even as a prophet of Allah, even though he has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his side, he wants a physical helper there. And that's okay. Seeking help is perfectly fine within this context. When you have something great that you want to achieve, it's okay to have that there. And he asked for someone specifically. He didn't just say, oh Allah, send me a helper. He had someone in mind, Haruna Akhi, that make him a part of my mission. So certain times the tasks that you want to achieve when they're seeming overwhelming and you know that you know what, there is someone out there that can help me with this task. You make specific dua that oh Allah, let them help me in this task. Now we look into what are the objectives of relationships? What are the objectives of friendships, right? He says, Ushdud bihi azri, that, let me, that let me be strengthened to, uh, through him. That with him, when I, when I have him, I'll have the support that I need to complete and to fulfill this task. So I'll be strong with him. amri, And let him have a share of the reward in this task that we're about to achieve. But I think this is where things really get beautiful. That the objective of a relationship is so that eventually not only do you do good work in this dunya, but you also remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and facilitate your pathway to the akhirah. And he goes on to say, That we may glorify you much and remember you much. And subhanAllah, I cannot highlight this enough. Those relationships that are built upon, you know, sports affiliations, on fashion, on the shows that we watch, it's okay that relationships start off on those notes. 
But at the end of the day, relationships need to develop into something deeper and something greater, which is that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you pray together, you do acts of ibadah together, you encourage one another to become better people. That is what relationships are all about. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in this portion, that your relationship cannot just be about your worldly pursuits and your worldly objectives and your worldly goals. It has to be about praising Allah and thanking Allah and remembering Allah and even remember reminding each other that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us. Innaka kunta bina basira, that you, O Allah, are always watching over us. And yes, you are going to be there to support us, but I need this help through Harun. Now, the session is all about du'as that have been answered. And I believe this du'a is one of the unique du'as in the Quran, along with several other du'as of Musa alayhi salam in particular, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds immediately. He says, Qala qad ya Musa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded by saying, all that you requested has been granted, ya Musa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him whatever he asked for. And this shows us that Musa alayhi salam had this very close relationship with Allah. And what was it? He was constantly talking to Allah, constantly engaging with Allah, constantly showing his weakness, constantly showing his vulnerability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he did that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved that about Musa alayhi salam. So when Musa alayhi salam finally asked for something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to him because he was constantly engaged. So if we can take something away from this portion of the session, it's the fact that we want to be engaged with Allah in prosperity and in adversity. Don't just wait to reach out to Allah when things are difficult, but even when things are good, converse with Allah. Thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly for the blessings that he has given you and he will increase you in them. And when things are going difficult and you're looking for someone to vent to, start off by venting to Allah. Yaqub alayhi salam, he says, Ashku bathi wa husni ilallah, that I complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the incident of Taif happened, what did he do? He had a conversation with Allah, right? He says, oh Allah, I have no plan right now. I have no one to turn to right now. Where do I go except to you, right? So have those conversations with Allah, showing your vulnerability and showing your weakness while recognize the strength and perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that. My dear brothers and sisters, we all have big daunting tasks in front of us. We all have goals that we want to achieve. Start off by reaching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by taking away that internal burden and struggle that we have. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy. Ask Allah to grant you the support that you need to get through that task. And always remember that as you lead a team and as you're part of a team, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always paramount. And when you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your du'as as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon us because he loves to pardon. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those whom their deeds are accepted in this month. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amen, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu Shaykh. That is subhanAllah. You know, a lot at this stage in the program, the, the gems and, and the, the points are building up so nicely on top of each other. Your points reminded me of something that Shaykh Yasser said early in the program where he was saying that dua is not a response to crisis. It's an act of ibadah that should be done always. And that really, really Allah like has been drilled in subhanAllah. Jazakum Allah khair, Shaykh, for, for, for reinstating oh, that yaki. and for being with us once again at Maghrib. Of course, Shaykh, for, to me, you're one of the OGs. I actually don't know where you fall into the on the hierarchy of who was here when subhanallah do you know what you so uh, i so I'll, I'll share two quick things with you okay i actually taught an al maghrib like refresher course okay. for the usul fiqh class that sheikh muhammad taught in 2004 in montreal oh, so that was my first real exposure to uh, al maghrib my first oh, time uh, i met sheikh muhammad sharif in person uh and then i taught the refresher course and so then I, uh, I was still in medina at that time and I actually got my Al Maghrib job off for a while I was in my last year in Medina. Oh, right. Wow. So that was in 2008. In 2008. Yeah. And then, if I'm not mistaken, in January 2009, I, I taught my first class. MashaAllah. Sheikh Muhammad shows very, very well. Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh, for being part of all of our journeys, subhanAllah, and for the dozens and dozens of classes, the thousands of people that you benefited over the years. I want to ask you, like I've been asking the instructor so far, is MashaAllah, especially with you being involved in a lot of activities, a lot of, you know, like high ranking roles and responsibilities in the Muslim and the Western community, what has dedicated so much of your time over the last 20 years to Amagrib? Why have you chosen us to be part of your so legacy? So I, I think there's two things that, that I'll mention over here, one personal and, and one public and generic. 
um, you know, the investing in education. Like if you even look at how do you break cycles of poverty, you invest in people's education. You want to look at change in the world, you invest in their education. And that's what Al-Maghrib is all about. It's about you developing a deeper understanding of your deen, you developing a deeper connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can go on and achieve the highest ranks possible and do the best that you can because everything starts off with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing that I'll mention, and this is something that I don't think I've ever shared publicly, but I've, I've wanted to share publicly for a, a long time, that one of the reasons why I love Al-Maghrib, stick around with Al-Maghrib, is because of the admin and the people running the, the, the show. Like these are, you know, Sheikh Muhammad Rahimullah, he used the term eagles, right? You have to surround yourself with eagles. But it, it, it's they're genuinely some of the best people you'll ever meet. And related to that is that they believed in me, right? They helped me, um, you know, have direction in, in the things that I wanted to do. They invested in me very heavily. So I will always be indebted to them. And I always, you know, continuously make dua uh, for, for those that lead al-Maghrib because of that. Jazakumullah khair. You got us a little teary here, Sheikh. Jazakumullah khair. You've been a beautiful part of that journey for us all. May Allah accept from you. We look forward to continue to benefit I mean, from you, inshallah, soon. For now, assalamu alaikum. Take care. Alaikum salam for Kato. Awesome sauce. That was Sheikh Naveed Aziz. MashaAllah. So many beautiful, beautiful uh, gems. And yes, Amin to all the du'as for our scholars. And you know, may Allah bless them with long life, health, prosperity, and bada. Amin. Jazakallah khair for for that beautiful du'a. Uh, before I bring on my next speaker, inshallah, I just want to shout out, mashallah, to those who've already been donating. There's been so many of you who've marked anonymous. So I keep having to scroll, scroll, scroll to, to be respectful of your desire to remain anonymous, mashallah. But one specific, uh, you know, giving level that we discussed earlier that brother Buna was talking to you guys earlier about who, you know, which, which levels of giving and, and which names he connects with. I connect with Ibn Batata, the traveling scholar. And I see a couple of folks have uh, given to that level. Sturfazia, Abrahim, Jazakumullah khair. May Allah make it heavy on your scale of deeds. May Allah make it accepted. And may Allah make it a reason for you to enter into Jannah. Ameen, or Balan Ameen. I see Sister Bibi Udhin, please forgive me if you said anonymous and I forgot and I said it anyways. I see Katia, I see Jill Laborde, I see uh, Rumina, Sultana, mashallah, Mediha Udhin. You guys are part of a, a, such a beautiful legacy that I can't even summarize, I can't even conceptualize, but I hope that you get a chance to feel and to experience what you're contributing to throughout today's webinar. All of these scholars and speakers that that started with Al-Maghrib were facilitated through you all. All of the donations that you have given so far have built up the people who are, the, the students of yesterday are the teachers of today, alhamdulillah. And the next speaker is going to be a great example of that. I want to give a quick chance to for you guys to see these levels again, to be reminded. Once again, the link is almaghrib.org forward slash donate. Uh, and you can see whatever you resonate with. It doesn't have to be connected to the person, but I was just saying Ibn Batata because of course, traveling scholar, many of you know, I love uh, you know, traveling and building up my iman through that to Muslim countries and parts of the world, alhamdulillah. And he taught in countless locations, engaging with people from all walks of life. And our community is so international. And we get to engage with people from Philippines to, uh, Rwanda, to Rwanda, to uh, Kenya, to uh, like Malaysia, Singapore, Scandinavia, Canada, the US, and so many places in between. Alhamdulillah, it's such an honor to have you all with us. Jazakum khair to those who are, mashallah, I think probably at midnight or later in the evening, joining us and making us part of your ibadah on the 21st night of Ramadan for you all as well. Once again, I do want to also mention something that we just quickly highlighted in the beginning, but Alhamdulillah, we've also launched our last 10 nights donation. So if you want to automate your donations for the last 10 nights, you're going to be caught up in so much ibadah. You want to maximize as much as possible to a cause that's so worthy that will maximize the, the, the impact of your dollars. Please do consider joining us for the last 10 night donations. And what's really smart, which I love the IT team uh, for doing this, is that they put it in a very specific time frame. So for those who've already signed up, your payments will start, inshallah, soon after sunset, 8, 9 p.m. today and they'll stop before midnight. So every single day without thinking, without you having to remember to pull out your wallet and hit a specific time frame before Fajr comes, you're automatically going to have your Ajr, uh, you know, recorded, recorded and you just have to make a one-click effort, inshallah, to do so. So make sure that you do sign up for that. And it can be as little or as much as you want. If you want to go crazy, you want to really maximize that, you can. If you don't have the capability, you just want to make sure that you, you're giving something that's small and consistent, you're able to do that as well, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and once again, I want to highlight, I think you guys have seen a couple of times, but mashallah, Allah, so many of the scholars that we have today were made possible because of the donations of yesterday. And I, I think you guys are kind of familiar with some of them now. Let me see if anyone's memorized or, you know, over the past few weeks that we've been going live, you remember which scholars started off as a mother of students or volunteers. Let me see if anyone remembers the names of instructors that we've had so far. We've got Raghat saying Majid Mahmoud, Sheikh Majid Mahmoud, mashallah. Yes, that's correct. We've got Farida saying Sheikh Ammar Shukri. That's correct, correct, correct. 
Let's see it. Rabia saying Rabia herself, mashallah. We've got Sheikh Amar. Yep. Dr. Farhan in the house, mashallah. Sheikh Salaman, which Salaman? Keep going, keep going. Sister Sara Sultan, who's up next, inshallah. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, I think we've caught most of them. So let me see if you guys go. There's, yep, Sheikh Saad Taslim. And I think there's one more. Let me share with you guys the visual. You may have, we kind of gave you a sneak peek earlier. You may remember this, but mashallah, Sheikh Sunaman Hani, Sheikh Amara Shukri, Dr. Farhan Abdul Aziz, Sheikh Saad Taslim, Sister Sara Sultan, and Sheikh Majid all started their journeys at the student level, subhanAllah. Some of them were met, were, were, were volunteers, were dedicated to the to the program, to the experiences, but there's no, uh, what's the word for it? Nepotism within the Amagrib community. They genuinely started off as, as passionate students of knowledge. And what Amagrib does is it builds amazing leaders. The responsibilities, the engagement that we have with with our volunteers and within our community members it automatically facilitates that type of mentality and that type of individual to grow and to build up with the mentorship that we provide alhamdulillah so that's part of what you're contributing to mashallah is the leaders of tomorrow and jazakum lakh for Salim for dropping that link once again that's amagrib.org forward slash donate please continue to support as you guys have generously been doing so so far and with that i want to invite our next speaker sister sarah sultan who i just teased and who you just saw on the image there she's a licensed professional counselor a licensed mental health counselor uh, we've been so honored to have her become part of the amagrib experience and the amagrib family with her contributions especially with that specific lens of of psychological of mental health tying into the to, to the nuanced uh, relationship with islam with practice with deen alhamdulillah i hope that you guys have benefited immensely from her mental health course that she's taught with us inside out and outside in and she's got some amazing products projects coming up later this year inshallah but with that said i want to bring on usada sara i want to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah usada sara how are you doing wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh i'm doing well alhamdulillah how are you I'm great. Alhamdulillah. You know, I was I was watching the last week's webinar and you were so sweet that you made such a sweet comment uh, about how I like, you know, try to help out when when scars You're are struggling. Awesome. Now my voice is struggling. But I will say I remember when you coughed a little bit, I was like panic messaging. Someone come on, someone come on, turn on the camera, give them a second and then come back off. But subhanAllah, you, you guys I are should have, I should have had Sheikh Ahmad before the last webathon to let him know that that might be an issue. I'm still having a little bit of a cough, but oh, inshallah, okay, like, I can shifa. get through this the next inshallah, few minutes. And I'm here. I'm admiring you speaking through fasting, you know, as as you're as you're sharing all of these beautiful gems about Al Maghrib too, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. You're so kind. Let's jump in. Usada, I cannot wait to benefit from you. Bismillah. And we'll be back here, inshallah, in just a few minutes. Bismillah. Bismillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala anihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Amma ba'd. Jazakumullah khair for another opportunity to speak with all of you wonderful brothers and sisters. Today, I wanted to talk about a trait that is a trait of the people of Jannah described by Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah as the greatest door that one enters to Allah and paradise on earth. And I want to connect this trait with a dua that, that inshallah can help us to nurture it. So what is this trait? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about it. It at the end of Surah Al-Fajr, some of my favorite, all-time favorite verses in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyatuha nafsun mutma'inna. He's going to say to the righteous, O oh, tranquil soul, soul, like a nafs mutma'inna is the self that is satisfied, the self that's content, the self that's tranquil. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say to that person, Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan marliya. Return to your Lord pleased with him and pleasing to him, that you are content with Allah and he is content with you. So join my servants and enter my paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all and all of our loved ones from amongst those who hear those beautiful words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And this quality, this quality that is a path to Jannah, to paradise in this world and in the next is the quality of contentment which is the ability to be satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, with the ability to be at peace, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners, even if it's not the plan that we would have chosen for ourselves. And there are so many dunya benefits uh, to the, about promoting a sense of contentment, including research that talks about how it's helpful in the management of chronic pain, it's helpful in depression, it's helpful in anxiety. But the absolute best benefit is that this is a means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being pleased with us and entering us into Jannah, into paradise. So how can we nurture this beautiful trait? I want to delve into a da'at 
that has a key to nurturing a sense of contentment. And this is a dot that the Prophet Sallallahu really encouraged us to say. He encouraged us to say it as part of our morning and evening of God, the morning and evening remembrances that we're encouraged to say every day. And he said that there's no person who says this dot in the morning and evening, but he has a promise. He or she has a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them pleased on the day of judgment. And he also said that whoever says this particular dot, that person must be given paradise. So, I mean, you know, this is a, this is, these are really big rewards. This is a, this is a huge, huge reward. And this dot is very short. And it's one of my favorites. It's Raditu Billahi Rabba wa bil Islam Dina wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anabiya. It basically means that I am content, I'm pleased with Allah as my Lord, with Islam as my religion, and with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my prophet. That's the meaning of it, is that you're you're saying multiple times a day that you are pleased with Allah, with your faith, and with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as your prophet. And when we say this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us that we are going to feel pleased on the day that we need that feeling the most, which is on the day of judgment, right? So it's so powerful when we, uh, when, when we think of such a short, such a short dot being a means to so much good. And I wanted to delve into a few stories of contentment that I have found uh, very powerful in the short time that we have together. And we see so many of these stories in our Islamic history, and we witness these stories around us today, people that we know personally, and then people that we witness, you know, our brothers and sisters in Gaza, for example, of people who are pleased with Allah, who are pleased with Islam, and who are pleased with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. If you look at the Quran, it's filled with so many examples of the, the amazing prophets and how they found contentment in the worship of Allah in the most difficult of times. But one that I uh, that really stood out to me is the story of the Prophet Yaqub, that when he received the shirt of his beloved son, Yusuf, where his older sons had taken him out saying, he's going to be safe with us. We got this. Don't worry. And they returned with crocodile tears crying that with this bloody shirt and they give it to their father saying that Yusuf salam, was eaten by wolf. Imagine the pain that the Prophet Yaqub salam, experiences when his beloved son, he knows that his beloved son is taken away from him at the hands of his other children. And how does he respond? In Surah Yusuf verse 18, he says, Fasabrun jameen, that I can only endure this with beautiful patience. That it is Allah's help that I seek to bear your claims. He immediately turns to the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bear the struggle of that moment. And so what do we see in this? We see that contentment with Allah, being pleased with Allah as we see in this dua, it doesn't mean that the decree of Allah isn't difficult. It doesn't mean that it's not painful. It's just that an understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan that I can't maybe understand, but I know that there is good in it. And I'm able to bear this beautiful patience because of the trust that I have in Allah. And that's what contentment does. If we are content with Allah as our Lord, then we naturally trust him. If we're pleased with Allah and we know that his plan is good, then we automatically trust him. And it leads to that trust, which allows us to face the inevitable trials of our, our lives through this lens of trust and contentment in Allah. We see the example of Bilal radiallahu anhu, who was one of the companions of the Prophet sallam, and the companions of the Prophet sallam, experienced a lot of struggle and difficulty. But, but Bilal radiallahu anhu was an African slave who was owned by a tyrant master and this master tortured him in the middle of the peak of heat in the desert, playing, placing a boulder on his chest commanding him to renounce his belief in Islam, commanding him to renounce his faith. And what does Bilal radiallahu anhu say? Throughout this torture, he reminds himself, ahadun ahad, ahadun ahad, one, one. These are the words that he could say in the midst of this torture, reminding himself and reminding his torturer that no one could take away the faith that was in his heart and the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the level of contentment that he had 
in having this faith, this contentment with Allah as his Lord to be able to withstand that torture and the contentment that he had in knowing that the ultimate reward is with Allah that allowed him to face such an incredible trial. If you all know of any converts personally, right? And even if you don't know them personally, you've probably seen some of their stories um, via Instagram, via whatever, you know, social media app. But I remember seeing a story uh, uh, so long ago where a, sh a sheikh received a question from a convert saying, is it permissible for me to pray in the bathroom? Because I don't know what my family would do to me if they caught me praying. They don't know that I've converted to Islam. Is it permissible for me to pray in the bathroom? Imagine the level of holding on to your faith that and contentment with that particular faith, the contentment with Islam that would lead you to risk so much, to risk losing your family, to risk that fear of what your family might do, to risk losing your friends who disagree with this choice. Right? How many converts have we heard who pray in the closet because they're so afraid of what's going to what's gonna happen? They're not ready to take that step to let their families know because of the impact that it that it might have. You know, my own mother, uh, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her uh, and preserve her. She's a convert uh, to Islam and uh, she's originally French. She's, uh, she, she has a uh, French heritage. And if any of you know about the socio-political environment in France, uh, it's very Islamophobic. And uh, they've banned the hijab in many places. They've banned the habaya in many places. Uh, and so when she converted to Islam, it was an issue in her family. But when she began wearing hijab, that was a huge issue in her family. And the lack of support and the criticism that she had to withstand from them, it was something that I always looked up to in knowing that Islam is a privilege. For her to be able to risk the, the, the ill will of her family, the, her family turning turning on her in that way for the sake of Allah, because she was content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the with Islam as her faith, that to me sent such a powerful, powerful message. And whenever I see stories of converts and reverts, it really strikes a chord in my heart in remembering all that she had to she had to go through. So when we see our brothers and sisters who have given up so much for their faith, make sure we offer them support. Because that level of contentment in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our Lord and Islam as our faith is something that we all aspire to and we want to be able to support them through it. And then the final story that I think about when I think about contentment is somebody I know uh, personally has survived cancer twice. MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her and her family health and complete shifa and protect her from ever having another diagnosis. The first time that she was diagnosed, she had really young children and she was dealing with the effects of the treatment. She was pushing through this test and she was so relieved to get the news that she was cancer free. And then one day, a little while later, after a routine checkup, uh, she received a phone call from her doctor and she picked up the phone and she was told that they found cancer again, but this one was more serious and it was a more aggressive form of cancer. And when she hung up the phone, the first thing she did was she turned to her husband and she said, Allah has sent us another opportunity. What are we going to do with it? Allah has sent us another opportunity. What are we going to do with it? And I thought to myself when I heard this, how does somebody get to that point of being able to receive news like this and think this is, this is an opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's not just a test, it's an opportunity. And it taught me that contentment is not about what's happening around you or what's happening to you. It's about what's happening within you. And that being content or discontented, at peace or complaining, it doesn't change our circumstances, but it changes our experience of the circumstances. It, exchange, it changes our experience of the situation. And so how do people get to this level of trust and faith in Allah that allows them to face such difficulties with forbearance and trust and contentment in his decree? And one of the steps that we can take is by making this da'a on a daily basis as a path to nurturing this quality in ourselves. Repetition naturally helps to inculcate a thought in our minds and it helps to replace the unhealthy thoughts and the doubt with healthy ones. So when you say that you're pleased with Allah and your faith and your prophet on a daily basis, you start to scan your life for things that support this thought. And so I leave you with a couple of questions to ask yourself with relation to building contentment. 
If we say that we are content with Allah as our Lord, what has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you that you're pleased with? What are you grateful for? What are you pleased with in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that maybe looking back, you didn't like when it first came, but now you realize the wisdom behind it. What's helping you build that content contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you say that you're pleased with Islam, what aspect of our faith is most beloved to you? What has brought the most meaning to your day? What is the act of worship that you find solace in? Right, and hold on to that. And if we're pleased with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as our Prophet, what is a lesson in the life of our Prophet? What's a sunnah? What's a what's a, an action that he encouraged that we can hold on to as we go about our day to day and our month of Ramadan, these last ten nights, and our lives moving forward? And we remind ourselves every single day that we're content with Allah as our Lord. It makes our choice to worship him so much easier. And it makes our ability to accept any struggles that come our way much less burdensome. So that in the end, when inshallah we're facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can hear him say, Return to your Lord, content with Allah, and he's content with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who are welcomed into Jannah, with contentment and from amongst those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased and content with. Allahumma ameen. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Ameen, ameen, walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hafsa, is it me or you? Are we on together? <laughs> it's me first and then you, inshallah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, but I know you want to steal Sister Sara from me, but it's okay. I still get to close, inshallah, and then and then I'll give it to you back. <laughs> Sister Sarah, Jazakallah khair. Beautiful, beautiful reminder and powerful example, subhanAllah. I actually didn't know that your mother was uh, a revert initially and then subhanAllah, she's a Fr French revert. That's like, we're, you know, going on hard, mashallah. Yeah. Um, but subhanAllah, that's that's one of the things that reminds me of, of what are the, one of the things that we do, what we do is because one of the reasons what we do is what we do is because we give people the access to authentic, easy, concise knowledge, especially reverts who are coming in and they're overwhelmed with all the resources of information that there is available. And at Maghrib, actually, we give the first class free to reverts to Islam so that they're able to come in. They have that taste. They have that community come around them. And then inshallah, they can they can take that journey. I didn't even know that. Yeah. It just makes me love al Maghrib even more. Alhamdulillah. What a beautiful, that's a beautiful gesture, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And mashallah, and so there's so everybody many. Everybody who donates today basically is helping, could potentially be helping a revert get their first class exactly. for free and set them on that path of authentic knowledge. That's amazing, Mashallah. Exactly, SubhanAllah. Now, of course, Usada, I've been asking everyone and I'm looking forward to your response as well is, Mashallah, you're kind of new to this Amagrib journey. You've, you, we've been seeing, like we've been teasing you for a little while and then we hard launched you this last year. Um, what is the purpose or what is the reason that you've committed yourself as well to join the Amagrib community, to become an instructor and to start this journey and to commit time for our students? Uh, we'd love to hear more. You know, for me, yeah, subhanAllah, Al-Maghrib is, is like a second home. You know, uh, Al-Maghrib is a place where I reignited my love of Islam, but then also the my knowledge of it. You know, alhamdulillah, my 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 dad taught me a lot initially, and you know, but having that that foundation of not just the classes, but knowing that the people you're learning from have authentic knowledge, that they have been trained in uh, in in the Islamic sciences in from an authentic source, mashallah, so that you can trust everything that's coming. That was such a relief, I, I found. And, and then building that sense of community, I think for me was uh, above and beyond one of the most amazing things that I gained uh, through Al Maghrib is having these friendships that have lasted since then and having friends that you gained for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there has been such support from a personal standpoint that I've gotten from them uh, that has been priceless. And so I really encourage all of you, if you have the opportunity to attend classes in person, yeah. some of the relationships that you build with, you know, uh, obviously the instructors and everything, but with the people that you see consistently there, it's like nothing else. And mm -hmm. so that's something that I have found uh, so valuable, alhamdulillah. Um, and then just having that, uh, like I said, that foundation of authentic knowledge and being able, you know, this was really my first exposure to really more intensive Islamic knowledge. And when I was doing my master's program for mental health counseling, mm -hmm. every single one of my papers, I'd be bringing in like a hadith or an ayah that I learned in an matter of class that that linked it. Everything you find, it's not just knowledge that you stick in your pocket. It's knowledge that you apply to your daily life. And that I, I find is, is really valuable in what Al-Mahrib offers, alhamdulillah. 
beautifully said, Jazakum Malachar. And I agree with you. It feels like sometimes there's like a, a friendship potion being wafted around in a mug of classes. People just get addicted to each other and they they become friends for life, subhanAllah. It's such a beautiful community. Jazakum Malachar for joining us and being part of that and for benefiting our students with your unique professionalist perspective. We look forward to continuing this journey with you, Sarah, uh, Sarah Sultan. Inshallah, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa all righty, guys. I know Buna really desperately wants to snatch this mic from me, so I don't want to want to take too, I'm <laughs> too ready to much jump longer. In. I have I have a full schedule set up, and I was like, I want this time, eh? I want to finish up strong. But alhamdulillah, we have so many, so many uh, lovely instructors and hosts coming up. Inshallah, the program continues. I just want to plug because Buna, both myself and yourself, we're based in Toronto, so I know yep. the numbers get confusing <laughs> because it looks like crazy high numbers on our side. Uh, keep in mind, one Canadian dollar is like you know. Is, is nothing us dollars subhanallah so it says 355k canadian it's actually 265k is our actual goal as you can see we're a third way almost there subhanallah and i know these last 10 nights are powerful i know a lot of people are waiting until you know the, the nighttime kicks in some of the the brits and folks have already just gone to iftar and tarawih and they're trying to tune in here and there but i highly recommend if there's an amount that you have that you want to commit to the giving levels that we shared earlier. Um, I highly recommend thinking that amount, just split that into your 10 uh, daily payments or nightly payments, inshallah. And that way you can automate that giving and you can maximize that effort as well so that you get it during the blessed 10 nights of Ramadan. And I know, Buna, you have a lot of energy to bring. I'm waning a little bit, so I'm going to pass it over to you, inshallah. I don't know how you do Before you, what do, you do, can yes. we bring that slide back on for one second, inshallah? Oh, okay. It's really important. You know, Sister Sada, mashallah, I didn't know that as well, that her mother is actually a convert. Mashallah. And, you know, when you think about it, all of the Sahaba were converts. Subhanallah. Allah Akbar, right? Yeah. So they came from that world where, you know, Islam was not easy for them to practice. So, Definitely. you know, we have a lot of the Sahaba that are mentioned here. We have, a, mashallah, a lot of carpenters have joined us today. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. A lot of brothers and sisters working with their hands. Look, alhamdulillah, I know we have a lot of doctors, engineers, lawyers, and there are no more carpenters, alhamdulillah. We need a little bit. Go go down, inshallah. <laughs> okay, let's go. I made scroll. a personal plea for Hassan ibn Thabit, alhamdulillah, since then we have received Three, Ibn Batuta also is getting some love, but we got to keep going Which, down. Which, by the way, I butchered. I got roasted for that afterwards. Don't come yeah. for me. I said, well, I Ibn said potato, something. you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Fortunately, yeah. No, alhamdulillah. It's a, we all understood what you meant. That's no problem, inshallah. Keep going down because, look, I feel like I'm still waiting for a person. Keep going down. Keep going down. Oh, we're oh, going. Oh. We're going. Sister, come on. We got to give him the good stuff. I think we're I, running out. No, no, no. You uh, two passed. You passed it now. There okay. you go. Okay. Okay. Not fan. Okay. Uthman ibn Affan, when you understand his story, when you understand the commitment, the sacrifice he made for this deen, the fact that there is still, you know, his sadaqa jari is living to this day, whether it's the well of Uthman, you know, the garden, you visit Medina and you see the specific contributions Uthman ibn Affan has made to the deen that have lasted till today. Allahu Akbar. Now imagine, subhanAllah, we, we heard from Sarah, Sister Sada Sultan that she, her mother was a revert. Imagine... You are helping to support the next generation of Muslims, people that are reverting to Islam. They will have children. Those children will go off to learn deen. And this barakah tree will continue to grow. So I need at least one person, inshallah, before this chat is over, one person who is brave enough to be like Uthman ibn Affan, who understands that sacrifice is essential for us to see succeed and to, for us to see our goals today. So inshallah, there's somebody out there watching right now who sees this number and is not terrified by it. Right. And by the way, I don't know. It looks bad in Canadian. I can't even imagine what it looks like in rupees, no. right? Because we're only seeing it on this side. But somebody was asking, can you donate in other currencies? Yes, you can. Yes. You can donate in your currency. You can donate in our currency. You will take bus tickets. We no. take crypto. We take credit, master. We take everything, inshallah. Don't worry about that part. We'll figure the money side out. The most important thing is for you to make a contribution now. And you can actually automate your donation so that mm -hmm. it is spread out throughout the last 10 days of Ramadan. People believe, and rightly so, that you know the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, exists in the last 10 nights. There's a difference of opinion around that. But we know a strong opinion is that it is in the last 10 nights. So if there's an opportunity for us now to do something which will benefit us for the rest of our lives, why should we wait, inshallah? Let's make a contribution now. You know, through the entire year, shaitan is with us. Shaitan is our accountant, subhanAllah. A lot of times, shaitan mm -hmm. is reminding us, brother, you got this bill. I got student loan from 95 I still didn't pay. But alhamdulillah, you can make something today, a contribution, a dollar amount that inshallah, you will see on that day. Allahu Akbar. We talked about it earlier. The day in which your sadaqah will be a shade for you. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, make a contribution right now, big or small. But I sincerely feel there is an Uthman ibn Affan out there. Go down inshallah. Have to keep going down. Okay. We'll, we'll do get want... to the instructors later. They can wait okay. inshallah. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> there is an Uthman ibn Affan. And I know there is an Asma. 
Ibn uh, Bint Abi Bakr, who's watching right now, inshallah. Sister who wants to be like Asma. And the story of Asma, look at this beautiful, mashallah. Mm -hmm. She risked her life to aid Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and her father. We are not asking you to risk your life. We are not asking you to put yourself into poverty. In fact, I have yet to hear of a person who has donated so much they have gone broke. Have you ever heard of this, Hafsa? No? Oop, I've never in my life. I've never heard of somebody who's given so much charity, they are now living in a shelter. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al razaq When you give for his sake, the risk will return. The doors of risk will open for you. I'll tell you one quick story before we bring our next, next instructor. Mm -hmm. I was once doing a fundraiser with a brother, and he was telling me a story about a sister who called up. It was like a telethon. She called up, and she donated her money for hajj. Now, we know hajj is very expensive. Masha, don't even ask me hajj prices today. It's probably... In the millions, Allahu Alam. I don't know, subhanAllah, I haven't checked, right? This sister donated all of her hajj money. A few moments later, a brother calls up the same line and he says, you know that sister who donated her hajj money? I am a hajj operator. I want to give her a free hajj. Allahu Akbar. Just like that. Just like that. In moments time, her risk was returned and even better. So please, brothers and sisters, I know it seems like, you know, people are asking you throughout this entire month and rightly so, because this is an opportunity for us all, inshallah, to benefit. So with that, inshallah, I would like to invite our next instructor, the big sheikh. Mashallah, I got to be on my best behavior now. I promise you, inshallah, nothing inappropriate, only halal jokes, inshallah. Okay. Uh, I would like to invite Sheikh Walid, inshallah, to join us on this wonderful live webinar, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan, mashallah. Uh, how are you doing? You look great, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. As usual, glowing. MashaAllah. <laughs> because of all the lights here, Shaykh. Alhamdulillah. How are you, Shaykh? How's Ramadan nice. treating you so far? Beautiful. Alhamdulillah. I can't believe we are in the last third of Ramadan. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us what we have done and help us to do more in the coming days. Amen. Make us among those who witness Laylat al Qadr. Allahumma amin. Amin ya Rab. Amin ya Rab. You know, Sheikh, alhamdulillah, it seems like just yesterday, I remember we were celebrating the 10 year anniversary of Al Maghrib. Alhamdulillah, we are now approaching 20 years. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. For this a beautiful effort, Sheikh. And because of people like yourself, Sheikh, who have sacrificed so much time, effort, your family, you know, I can only imagine the personal strain it's taken on you. We thank you, Sheikh, as as uh, you know, a part of the Al Maghrib students and the family, just for your sacrifice and for the efforts you and all the instructors have made. And of course, alhamdulillah, we're all just trying to catch up to the legacy of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, who's mashallah, given us such a you know big footsteps to follow. Sheikh, before we actually ask you to start, I have a quick video I want to show you, Sheikh. Okay. Sure. The video that you have not seen yet. So I want to get your genuine reaction after we watch this video, inshallah. So let's watch this quick video and we'll jump right into Sheikh Walid's talk. 20 years ago, a curious young girl asked Sheikh Walid a question that sparked a life-changing journey. Little did she know, that simple moment was just the start of her exciting journey into a world full of Islamic knowledge and endless learning. She began taking courses with Al Maghrib and joined a supportive community that would enrich her faith for years to come. And now, two decades later, she stands before the Kaaba as she performs Umrah with the same Amagr family that nurtured her growth. Alhamdulillah, this has been a full circle moment for me, I feel. I think that I really found a lot of my Islamic foundation with Al Maghrib. I found a lot of that passion. I found a lot of the community. You feel so much love with the people that you're with. Like Al Maghrib, it's all it's like it's an individual journey, but it's also a communal journey. And I think we talked about this with even making dua and and the haram and, and a lot of the spiritual things that we did throughout this trip. Um, it's it's a very like individual growth moment, but also something that you feel with everyone else in the Muslim Ummah. Umrah is something that's such a, a transformative experience and I think having the guidance of, of Al-Maghrib and um, with the sheikhs that came, I think it added an element that um, I don't think I would have had if I had just done it on my own and I really wanted that. Um, so Alhamdulillah, like I think I really got that with Al-Maghrib, especially with the people that you meet. I think like we talked about that too, you just feel like you've known everyone for such a long time. and. Alhamdulillah, like all of my experiences with the people here have just been amazing. So it's so nice to come on a trip like this with so many people who also have that same intention and love. But her story is just one among many. 
Over the past two decades, a Maghrib has empowered countless students to become leaders and da'is in their communities. Among them, Sheikh Majid Mahmoud stands out as the first a Maghrib graduate to become an instructor, paving the way for others to follow. And then there's Dr. Farhan Abdulaziz and Sheikh Saad Tislim, former students turned respected teachers, imparting knowledge and wisdom to the next generation. And let's not forget Sheikh Ammar, whose journey from volunteer to director and instructor at Amagrib is a testament to the Institute's transformative power. And the stories go on. But none of this would have been possible without your help. Your support nurtured the leaders and da'is of today. And now, as we look toward the future, it's time to extend that support even further. Thank you for being the cornerstone of our success. Keep supporting us in shaping the leaders and da'is of tomorrow. Jazakallahu khairan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Wow. Sheikh, do you remember that, that little girl? Yes, I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember that. that, that I, I don't remember her as a, by a name or anything like that, but I remember the, the, the picture is something that always in my mind because it, it reminds me of what's this all about? You know, they say um, children are one third of our society, mm. but, but they are the whole entire future of our society. Allahu Akbar. So um, that's something that uh, important to to uh, to focus on, and and what we do here in the Maghrib, and what we're trying to make sure that we accomplish is to have um, a legacy for generations to come. You know, um, a few months back, I went to back to Emirates to Dubai after long years. And my intention was just to be able to go pray janazah on Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, rahimahullah. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and I went to his grave and I prayed janazah on him because I have not. And um, just I kept thinking about the moment when he approached me to join Al-Maghrib. And he said to me, I want you to join Al-Maghrib because I, I want to do something that will continue to benefit us when we are in our graves, Sheikh Walid. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And at that moment, I see him in his grave, and I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit him from the work of Al-Maghrib. And with this, I want to say to everyone who hearing me today, I'm inviting you to invest in something that will benefit you after you go to your grave. And that's what matters the most. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, until today, there is an account in his name in one of the Saudi banks. Uthman ibn Affan account in, in Bank al Bilal. Wow. It's interesting. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an has a bank account <laughs> in that Islamic bank in Saudi Arabia. Because the waqf, the endowment that he left behind him, it continued to grow, continued to be sold. So the actual waqf today is a, is a, is a building, is producing money. So the honor of this is Uthman ibn Affan. And it is in the bank, which is something was like a shocking for me when I, when I saw that. So I'm inviting you today to give and to give generously you know, to a maghrib for something that inshallah will last uh, after you die. Mm -hmm. You know, we're building something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. When you live for yourself, your life became very short. It ends with your death. But when you live for something bigger than you, your life will continue as that thing, that idea, that, that knowledge continue to grow and continue to spread. And alhamdulillah, we are here only to promote and to, you know, bring people to the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. And, you know, we can talk a lot, but the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-sadaqatu burhan. You know, as-sadaqa is a proof. As we say also in our culture today, you know, you know, talk is cheap. You need to put your money where your mouth is. So... You know, and it's, it starts with each and every one of us as instructors, as team, as a, as every one of us. You know, I, I I say that all of us are responsible for this. Also, 
we're looking for those Ansar, we're looking for those supporters, we're looking for Uthman, for Asma, for Aisha, for Khadija, for all those, you know, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, for all Ali ibn Abi Talib, but we're looking for Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar. We're looking for all those people who are, you know, uh, there to support us. And alhamdulillah, you guys have been supporting us all over, over the years. And I want to say directly, asking you to be as generous as you can. I heard something from Sheikh Kamal yesterday, touched my heart. We were doing a fundraising for our masjid. And he said, I recognize and acknowledge, you know, that uh, a lot of us investing in our sadaqah in Gaza, and it's worth it, 100%. And we give. But I want to tell everyone, he said, that the people of Gaza, alhamdulillah, the great need, and we should support them. But he said, also, remember that the people who have a good support from so many different directions, from every corner in the world, from every country, from every community, from every city and masjid. But our masjid only gets its support from you, not from other people. And I'm telling you, Al-Maghrib support comes from you, the one who knows us, the one who took our classes. It's not going to come from someone never heard of Al-Maghrib in some country or government or anything like that. Our source of income and our source of support only from you. While many other causes have many other, you know, reasons for it. But this is not to undermine anybody else, but it's to emphasize the important the important role you play in this organization. And that's why I'm I'm appealing you. And I and I, I do believe, I do believe hundred percent that this the ummah is one body. Mm. And that one body. You know, the strength of it is connected as the weakness of it is connected. As in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, when you have a pain in your legs or your stomach, your head responds to that pain. Because one umma, one body. Also, when you have a healthy heart, healthy blood pressures, healthy, you know, muscles, healthy, mental, mentally or healthy, that also impact your whole entire body, become more strong. Mm. And that's why strengthening one part of the umma will result eventually to strengthen the ummah at large. And, and that's what we believe in. And that's why we keep going. We keep every day fighting for making sure that Islamic education get what it deserves. And our Muslim brothers and sisters who don't speak Arabic, who lived and, and, and grew up in, 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 in far country away and culture away from Islamic culture and, and Islamic world and, and, and like us who live in the West, they have equal opportunity, if it's not better opportunity, to access knowledge, to access the 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 the, the, the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. And I would say that we're so privileged, alhamdulillah, uh, in many ways, many different ways. And one of it is to have institutes. We're not the only one, but we are definitely one of the pioneer one. And I'm saying this not as as arrogant, but as grateful to Allah, you know, uh, in this area. Uh, and um, with this being said, please, I'd like to see that number goes up high. And Buna, you ask for Uthman ibn Affan, I'm telling you, I'm making sure I'm going to reach out to my family member and I will commit to the first 5,000, you oh, know, to respond oh. to your, to your, uh, to your call. And I hope to see many people to come forward and to give and to give generously to Al Maghrib. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. I mean, Sheikh, you know, subhanAllah, as you were speaking, Sheikh, mashallah, the barakah was pouring down. We had one anonymous person who donated, they, they saw Uthman ibn Affan. They said, I want two Uthman ibn Affans. They donated $10,000. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma barik lahum, ya Rabbi. Allahumma barik lahum, And we had, Allahumma from what I understand, maybe I'm reading it incorrectly, we had three Uthmans come through. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So, mashallah, tabarakallah, Sheikh. Just you being here, your presence has already opened the doors for us, Sheikh. Can we ask kindly for you to make dua for not just those kind and don't and generous people but also those who have already given beforehand inshallah if you could make a dua there are people i know who are struggling people who are dealing with financial burdens people who are dealing with family and so many different issues and maybe this sadaqah is a means of them helping them in their life sheikh but, but perhaps you could make dua Absolutely. for all those who have donated i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names and attributes 
that everyone who giving today to Al Maghrib, that their sadaqah to be accepted, mm. their sadaqah to be a light in their hearts, light in their graves, lights in the day of judgment for them. Mm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means for them to be protected from hellfire, mm. them and their parents and their family members. Ya Rabb, I ask you by your name and attributes, you the most generous, the most merciful. But anyone who donate today, who donated or going to donate, I ask you, Allah, to make this sadaqah a reason for the righteousness of their hearts, the righteousness of their children. Make it a reason for them to be happy in this dunya and the akhirah. Ya Rabb, what we give is very little in comparing to what, we had, to what you have given us. Amen. But you are the one who accept the little and reward so much for it. So we ask you, Allah, that you know that we did this. If you know that we did this for your sake, seeking your pleasure, seeking that this will benefit the ummah, the Muslim ummah, is to accept it from us and to reward us for it and to keep it dhukhr, to keep it like a treasure that we will see it in the day of judgment, to be a means of your of you being pleased with us, you being happy with us, you being welcoming us to Jannat al Naim in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabb, you know that everyone here can will do what they can. Ya Rabb, we ask you to help us to do more and to be able to always give. Ya Rabb, I ask you to make it easy for us to give and to make giving something that we love to do. As you describe the believer that they love to give, we ask you to grant us this quality. Allahumma ameen. 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 Zakallah khair. You know, it's beautiful to see people being so generous, Sheikh. Of course, like you mentioned, there's so many causes that people are supporting this blessed month of Ramadan, but I'm still going to request more of Mad ibn Affans because I know there are people, mashallah, who want to be like Uthman ibn Affan. And that was a beautiful uh, you know, story that Sheikh shared about the fact that Uthman ibn Affan still has a bank account to this day for his sadaqah, for the work that he put in at that time. I know there are brothers who want to be like Uthman ibn Affan. There are sisters who want to be like Asma, uh, Asma bin Abu Bakr. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question for you, more of a fiqh-related question. Can a sister give her husband's wealth? Because I know some sisters are questioning, maybe, you know, I have money, my husband has some money. Can they give sadaqah on behalf of their husband as well? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was asked uh, uh, this question, uh, if, I will, if I understand your question correctly. Uh, to give on behalf of her husband, yes, but I would assume you think you're asking... Can she take from his money and give sadaqah? Yes. So the Nabi Sallallahu was asked this question specifically. Mm. And his answers and the Hadith and Bukhari and others, that the Nabi Sallallahu said, if she take from his money, without him knowledge, without his knowledge, it will not cause harm to him financially. Okay? She will be rewarded and he will be rewarded. Allah. Even without his permission. Allah. But she knows that this is something will not cause harm to him. So... Yes. Definitely, this is something that if you know that it is, will please him. It might be a little bit like, you know, oh, okay. But you know that some sisters tell me, my husband, Sheikh, is a very rich man. But yet he give the giving of a poor person. And he, he's like what you said. He, he is, mashallah, has a very high income, but he give the giving of the carpenter. You know, and he, uh, the example that you used earlier. Alhamdulillah, everything has barakah. You know, it's not about the amount, it's about the barakah in it. But she, she tell me that, and I tell her this hadith. As long as it's not going to cause like a, a problem between you and him and then the tension or all And it is weird when when he's okay if she spend five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars on purses and, and mm. shopping on and, and, and shoes, he will be okay with that at the Macy's or something like that. But when you heard that she give a thousand dollars for sadaqah, oh, why? And that, that really hurt. But you know what? There is a hadith, one of my favorite hadith. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised for people. They will put in chains and they will be dragged to Jannah Allah. with chain. Yani, Allah. Jannah, you drag them with chain to Jannah. So sometimes you have to do that. You have to push your husband, to push your children, to push your friends. You know, to do things that it will benefit them in the Akhirah. Alhamdulillah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help. And that's why, you know, uh, Buna always chain us and pull us toward the Jannah. Jazallah khair. 
Alhamdulillah, Shaykh. As long as my wife isn't watching this, you know, Alhamdulillah, everything is going good so far. Alhamdulillah, no trouble in my house. But you know, Shaykh, subhanAllah, I had another question before you get even to your talk. Someone's asking about donating on behalf of someone who's deceased, someone who has passed away. Is this something that is recommended? Is this something that you can do for a cause like this? Absolutely. I would say, especially your parents. If they are passed away or they're still alive, mm -hmm. why you wait until they die? You know, give sadaqah on their behalf. Give sadaqah. I, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I just say it for you guys to, uh, uh, any, um, to learn from it, okay? Uh, one thing that I do a lot, you know, when I give them any charity, I say, Ya Allah, this is on behalf of me, my parents, my family, and my children. I mm. always say that. And I said, Ya Rab, make this a means for me to have a better relationship with my children and my family. Mm. I always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this, this dua when I give. Because a sadaqa is, 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 is a means, is basically wasila, which is something that take you from one point to another. And one, that's why a sadaqa is a means to expiate your sins, to accept your request, you know. Um, so one of the things that you always do, include your family. And alhamdulillah, you can include as many as you want. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is way more generous than what you think. So don't even limit yourself or think that there's no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous. So always include your family, alhamdulillah, especially your parents, your children, your family in their behalf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the children who are not balag yet, bona. And even I, I do this sometimes on behalf of my grandchildren, Hind, she is, you know, uh, five years. Also, I include her on behalf. But what she will benefit from it. In Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh said that when the child reached the age of puberty, yeah. okay, all the good deeds that the child did in the past, it will count for them. So when oh. they reach it, they don't start from zero. They start from whatever they have done in the past with zero sin. But all the good deeds that they did, so all the things that your children did in their early age will count for them. So you know what? I would like my grandchildren to start, my children to start with, you know, high level of, of a good deeds. Because in the end of the day is what's going to make us survive in the day of judgment when our good deeds are more than our bad deeds. Mm. So make sure that you always do that and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after every sadaqah you give, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, you know, qaddimu bayna yidayna jwaakum sadaqat. It was wajib in the beginning of Islam that before you make the dua to give sadaqah. But that's abrogated. It became just recommended mm. for you to do that. Allahu Akbar, you know, Jazakallah Khair Sheikh for that beautiful insight. And of course, people can donate now throughout this entire blessed month. They can automate their donations so that what they give now can be spread out throughout the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Please go to the website if you haven't already, almaghrib.org slash donate. As the Sheikh mentions, Panallah, you can give on behalf of those who you love who are still with us, right? And I maybe I was mis I was confused in my own understanding that a lot of times we think, you know, about giving for those who have deceased, but sometimes we forget that there are people living who also can benefit from your sadaqah as well. So beautiful. No, no, the, the, the deceased one has more right because they died. They can't right. do anything anymore, but you can include all of them, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Zakallah Khair, Sheikh. I want to bring in a, a special guest. You might recognize him. Uh, he's a brother who's, uh, I believe, local to Houston. Uh, also works as my stunt double at times. Uh, I don't know if he's with us right now, but uh, I'd love to bring in Sheikh Ammar, inshallah, because I think the three of us together, Sheikh, is a powerful combination. And, you know, Sheikh Ammar, mashallah, He's, he's uh, I believe, now in Canada doing amazing work for an event tonight with Islamic Relief, mashallah. But for all of us, Sheikh, who have seen even the growth of someone like Sheikh Ammar, who started off, we saw the video, started off as a volunteer. I remember him as the Amir for the Qabila in New York, uh, Qabila Tayyiba. Where is the Qabila Tayyiba people at? Are any New Yorkers still with us right now? Uh, New Yorkers haven't broken their fast yet, mashallah. But for those people who remember Sheikh Ammar's journey, and I've just been so blessed to see Salam him. Wa alaikum salam. I don't need to hear the whole speech, man. Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? <laughs> can, I, can I at least big you up a little bit? No, 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 man. I'm good, brother. Alhamdulillah. No, but it's important. Always a pleasure, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. 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 The, the only thing I'll just mention about Sheikh Ammar, because, you know, your journey is, you know, really, it's, it, it encapsulates a lot of the Al Maghrib mission. And we heard the story of the little girl who, you know, in that iconic picture, you know, asking the question to Sheikh Walid. You know, there are so many people who started off as children. I I, I've definitely, I've definitely asked a lot of questions to Sheikh Walid in my time. Alhamdulillah. 
Yeah, but I remember seeing, you know, so many children attending the Maghrib courses, like kids who were quite young, seeing them today as adults, seeing them today even with their own children, bringing their children to the courses. I cannot wait, inshallah, for the next course. I plan on bringing my kids. And it's like the whole generation of growth in our community is such a beautiful thing to witness. Sheikh Ammar, you've been a part of this from very early on. You know, why is it that we continue to do this work? Why is it that Al-Maghrib continues to have a place in so many people's hearts around the world? You know, when you were mentioning the kids, I don't know if you caught it earlier, but Hafsa was counting herself as one of the kids of Al-Maghrib. <laughs> and she said, uh, she said, you know, I grew up, you know, listening to Buna's poetry and, you know, one of the predecessors. She made you sound so old. I thought she was going to say one of my ancestors. One of the Salaf, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, you've been catching strays all day, man. I've been giggling to myself. I'm, I'll, I'll well, share know, a few others. But Alhamdulillah. All... But, but we remember, Sheikh Ammar, when, mashallah, even to do something like an Al-Maghrib class, and I'll say this for the people that are young now, at a time when it was revolutionary, to even have brothers and sisters in a room learning Islam together. Allahu Akbar. This was incredible at the time. Incredible advancement in Western society, right? It wasn't the norm. al Madrab yeah, yeah. is part of the group that introduced this, that pioneered this service of giving, especially sisters, adequate access to scholars. This is something that, you know, to this day, a lot of sisters don't have the access that they have, you know, through Al-Maghrib. It's just not easy for them to access their local imam or go to talk to the local sheikh. But mashallah, Al-Maghrib has been facilitating that. We have even female instructors who have joined the roster. It's beautiful to see the family growing, alhamdulillah. Yeah, and alhamdulillah, a lot of times Al-Maghrib is the one pioneering these types of things in, in goodness. Like I remember the sisters in the, in the classrooms and how, you know, um, Sheikh Muhammad really believed in it. I remember sisters teaching, and I remember Sheikh Walid really believing in it. You know, even if there was some sort of time, you know, and Sheikh Walid mentions this all the time. You know, leaders should lead. Mm -hmm. Leaders don't. Leaders don't get. Uh, you know, um, they don't follow the public. They have to lead the public, especially if it's if they know something is good, and if they know something is halal and it's authentic, or it's from the Sunnah, or it's beneficial to the community. So, Alhamdulillah, Al Maghrib is, has always been that. It's been like a, a North Pole in that sense, mm -hmm. or a North Star rather. And it at the same time, it's, you know, you trust the authenticity of the knowledge. You trust the sincerity, inshallah ta'ala, of the, of the people who lead. And it's always balanced. And mm -hmm. so combining all of these beautiful things that I think Ustadi Yasmin summarized earlier is really, really good. Alhamdulillah. And so, especially you know, accommodating for a lot of us who may not be, you know, nat native Arabic speakers, allowing us to have access to authentic knowledge, which a lot of times, you know, if you don't speak the, the Arabic language, you may not have access to certain texts. You may not be able to, you know, l listen to certain scholars. But the fact that Al Maghrib Institute has been pioneering even the English language. And now, mashallah, look at English is spoken, you know, all around the world. We have people tuned in from India, from Kenya, from Nigeria, from all over these amazing places. And by the way, all of these currencies are accepted today. Alhamdulillah. Allah 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 Every Allah single Allah. currency. You have Nigerian money. Listen, you have listen if, if your currency is falling, if it's free falling, make sure you donate today. <laughs> make sure you invest with us, inshallah. If, if you cannot do anything with your money, at least here it will be put to good use. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh. Please go Sheikh to the I have a, I have a question for you, Sheikh. Now, we, you um you mentioned a hadith a couple of days ago at, at Clear Lake Islamic Center that was really beautiful, and that was the the virtue, and it's very rare. You don't hear this a lot. The virtue of donating twice. So if I donated yeah. today, mm -hmm. I donate tomorrow. Or if I donate, or I, if I donated in this fundraiser an hour ago, the virtue of donating again. Yeah, the Nabi sallallahu the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith Sahih Bukhari and others that the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man amfaqa zawjayni min shayin zawjayn nudi yom al qiyamati yidha min yani abwa bil jannah ya Abdullah hada khair halum fa akbar." The Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "When somebody give twice or do twice of the same thing." It will be he will be called on the day of judgment, and you will see that in his record. The angels, the gatekeepers of the paradise, will call this person and said, Come, come from my gate, come from my gate. Mm. This is good, this is special. So, those who give twice, those who because you beat the shaitan once when you give the first time, mm. then you show him that you beat him again by giving another time. Allah. You beat the shaitan once by making qiyam al layl with two then you do another two raka. That's also. You know, so when you double your, it basically it double your commitment. It it shows that 
you know, your, your full commitment to the khair. That's why I always say, if you write a check of $500, make sure you make it 510 Make sure mm -hmm. 530. You always beat the shaitan because one of the ibadat al azima one of the great act of worship, is muraghamat al shaitan is basically the fighting the shaitan. That's in itself an act of worship. And every time you beat him, you get reward for that. It's like one of the great ibadah is the obedience of submitting to Allah. So um, that's absolutely yes. So if you donate, like the brother who said, two Uthman, you know, double. And and with this, I want to share something happened to our master in our master years ago. I never forget the story. One of the brothers, uh, he wrote me a, a note. He said, Sheikh, I will match whatever you, you will collect today. And my goal was like 100,000. So let's say, just to figure it uh, uh, I'm just making the number. Um, but it's around that figure. So I, I raised, you know, uh, at that time I was 30,000. So I said, come on, we need 100,000. This guy will match whatever. So alhamdulillah, we raised 70,000. So I mm -hmm. expect he will match with 70. So that will be 140, more than my goal. The brother came to me and he said, Sheikh, what is it that you, um, you, did you read my message or you did this purposely? I said, I read your message. He said, and I looked at it and I see, he said, I will match whatever you collect from now on. I said, he will match whatever we collect. So from now on, it means the 30 or 35,000 will not be included, mm. you know? And I said to him, I'm sorry, you know, I, I didn't mean that. I definitely didn't do it on purpose. I, it was a mistake. Then he looked at me and he said, you know what, Chair? I don't think it's a mistake. Mm. And I didn't understand what he meant. Then he came back and he gave me a check of $180,000. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And I said, wow, it was 140. He said, Sheikh, it wasn't a mistake because Allah knows that I'm capable of doing way more than the 30 or 40 that I played. Mm. And Allah SWT want to teach me a lesson, mm. to want to remind me. And he gave me that opportunity because he knows I'm capable of that. You know, that's, I told him, that feeling of yours, that feeling of yours has more reward than the money that you give. Allah that feeling of you, that yaqeen that you have in your heart now when you give, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never put you down, will never be, that in itself more rewarding than the charity itself. The action of the heart is way much higher than the action of the, the money or the limbs you do. And I, I, I want to say something about all those individuals that were mentioned. Um, from instructor from Sheikh Suleiman Hani, Sheikh Ammar, Sheikh Majid Mahmoud, Mohammed Abdul Aziz, Saad Taslim, and, and many of those who, alhamdulillah, taking leadership positions in, in, in the da'wah scene, some of them CEO of companies, you know, one of the biggest charity company and in, in a charity organization, NGOs, in, in the world today, led the CEO of, of it, is one of Al Maghrib Amir before. You know, some Umarat start their own NGOs in, in England and, and so forth in America. I, I want to say something, um, especially in regard to the instructors. And I, and I always say this, not just because I'm not on the call or anything like that. And I would say maybe we help in opening the door, showing the opportunity. But Al-Fadlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're out first. Then they, have, they are the one who benefit Al-Maghrib the most. And I'm telling you, we appreciate this, you know, hatch of uh, young uh, second generation instructor in Al-Maghrib so much because I think they are the one who benefit Al-Maghrib more than we benefit them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue, give them success and to continue, you know, to see the third and the fourth generations Ameen. of our instructor coming forward. I mean, you know, Sheikh, subhanAllah, it's, I know there's people, mashallah, who are watching all around the world. Alhamdulillah, we have three Uthman ibn Affans, mashallah, that have come in. I need at least a th at least three more, inshallah, because Uthman ibn Affan is playing a very special part in today's program, and we want to honor his legacy by continuing to donate, inshallah. So let's get another three Uthman ibn Affans, inshallah, before we end the program today. But before we do that, I just want to mention this one thing, Sheikh, because 
you know, you talk about the next generation of students. There are so many people who, like myself, maybe, you know, we're, we're not as knowledgeable. We're not instructors. We feel like at times we're deficient in ourselves, but we also want to share in the reward. Can we compete with y'all if we are a part of this Sadaqah train by us donating? Are we also, inshallah, helping to, you know, not take reward from anyone, but to add, inshallah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever guides to khair is the one similar to the one who has done it. So are we now at an opportunity where we can compete with you? Uh, absolutely. If the Nabi ﷺ said, one error, one error in the battlefield, three people will enter Jannah because of it. The one who shot the error, and the one who passed it, and the one who made it. Wow. Three people enter Jannah for one error. In the battlefield. So it's not only the, the archer who entered Jannah, the shot. Mm -hmm. No, the one who passed it to him, just pass it. Wow. The one next to him, who just like, it was like, yeah, and the Prophet is the one who made it. So you know what? The same thing. I remember one of the years, somebody came to me and said, Sheikh, I want to sponsor every single flight of yours for the whole year. Wow. For any da'wah trip. Inshallah. We need better uh, and friends. he said, I'll... Uh, he said, I'll pay for every single flight. And I was just thinking about this. You know, maybe it wasn't like much, like, you know, but, but the way he's thinking, he wants to make sure that he is there with me in every da'wah event I did this year. Allah. Even though he didn't travel. You know? Uh, uh, and so on. So that's that's something you, you still can... Have, do you still have his phone number, Chef? I need... I need some air miles. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, what I'm saying is this was a unique thing, you know? Mm. Somebody said, hey, I want to sponsor, for example, a class. I want to sponsor this. There's a lot of, like, things that people became very unique in the way they do the sadaqah it's, uh, also as well. So, yes, the point, yes, you share the ajr, inshallah ta'ala, and uh, enable us to continue do what we're doing. It is something that, Definitely, it, it, you will share the ajr with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. I mean, and you mentioned, we heard from, you know, Sister Sada Sultan. I'll bring this up again because I did not know that her mother was a revert, you know? And we talk about the impact of our community as Muslims and the fact that there are so many people, mashallah, who are entering Islam. So many people that might be confused. It's very easy to get lost in the sauce. There's so many videos. There's so much access to information. It sometimes even feels saturated online. I know personally, okay, I anytime a person in my circle has, you know, come into Islam, the first place I recommend for them to go is Al-Maghrib. You know, Faith Essentials, mashallah, has been doing amazing yeah. work, even as an online library, just to have that content there. So this is an investment, not just in us, but in the future generations of our families, and also the people who will come into Islam, inshallah, who will now have an authentic source, a place to learn, a place to grow, a place to feel family and community, which Shaykh, mashallah, Al Maghrib has been doing for, you know, 22 years so far. Yeah, I, I, I saw somebody that day in Al-Mpas, uh, in Houston. And I thanked that person. I said, do you remember about 10 years ago, you donated the whole entire camera that we used at that time. Now this camera is very old, you know, but so many content actually online was shot by your camera. He said, Chief, you know what? I even forget about that. Allah. You may, you give today and you will, I guarantee you, you will forget about it. But Allah will never forget about it. It will be on your record until the day of judgment. Um, you know, there is a beautiful hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, man bana wa If you build a masjid, even if it's in the size of a bird nest, Allah will build for you a house in Jannah. Al ulama rahimahullah said, when the Prophet said like the size of a bird nest, what that means? Is that means even if it's a small masjid, or there is another interpretation which is very common and correct interpretation. They said, even if your share in the in building that masjid, like the size of the bird nest, mm. and the sh the money that you donate or the thing that you was only able to take that much space, very small, tiny part of the masjid, you still get the edger of building a house in Jannah. You do need to build the whole masjid to get a house in Jannah. So even part of the masjid will allow you to be having a house in Jannah. And the same concept, part, you don't need to pay Al-Maghrib's budget or the class 100%, but part of it. That's why don't hold back. If you don't have the 5,000, 
and you have a 500, you have a 200, 300. And, and, and alhamdulillah, this is not just uh, money will come. I, I don't have, I I'm always know that the money will come. What, what I'm always worried and will always commit, I always talk to the brothers and sisters and our team here in the Maghrib is not about the money. It's about what we do with the money. You know, and we ask Allah the barakah in it. Alhamdulillah, we've seen this over the years. We almost, what, it's not, if we did not break, uh, I wouldn't be surprised is we more than, we have more than half a million people have benefited from Al Maghrib already. And we are, we're very soon will hit the million n number as it's a magic number that we're looking forward to break. A million persons that benefited from Al Maghrib. Um, and, and very soon, I think we will, we will get to that number. Well, I think even if you, you know, if you calculate the online views and the student, alhamdulillah, more than a million easily, you know, people have benefited millions. No, I mean, I mean, somebody attend a physical, oh, actually physical event course. of us. Right, yeah. right. Alhamdulillah. You know, either way, definitely. When, you know, either when way, alhamdulillah, you know, we see the impact and, you know, actually there is a brother. I don't know if we should bring him up yet if he's ready. There but is before a brother. that, Buna, I just want to say that okay, go ahead. Uh, when you're talking about 20 years, a lot of times I feel like people might think that you know, uh, I might have missed the boat to get in on the ground, the ground floor, you know, in investments, you want to get in at the beginning. And you hear the story of the projector that a sister donated right in the, the earliest days of Al-Maghrib. And then another camera set that was donated 10 years ago, and or already two decades in. But how early a person is depends on the length of the institution. So if Al-Maghrib lasts, inshallah ta'ala, another 200, 300, 400 years, then the first 20 years is very much still the beginning. Mm -hmm. And institutions are measured by decades. They're not measured by, you know, a year here or two. And alhamdulillah, we're very happy that after two decades, we're stronger than ever before. And so everybody here yeah. is very, very, very still early. This is still, uh, what do they call it? Early investing. This is still mm -hmm. in the early yeah. stage of investing. And so yeah, and, and Ammar, not only that, you, yeah. you remember the one who did it like projector and something like that, maybe that was used to serve maybe uh, two, three, four, five, seven hundred or two thousand. Uh, today, today, Buna, between mm -hmm. four instructors or five instructors and Ammar instructors, we reach over five million people online. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's just four or four, four, four or five instructors, over five million people. So today somebody donate Ammar will even his sadaqa, like the camera, for example, yeah. will reach way more people than the one who donated 20 years ago. Allah. Yeah. yeah. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Please, brothers and sisters, as we're in this blessed time, um, please do continue to donate, inshallah. Almaghrib.org slash donate is the link you should go to. You'll see all the wonderful giving levels here. We we're talking about the Sahaba. We we're talking about converts and reverts. And I did mention it earlier, but all the Sahaba were reverts. So they experienced, mashallah, you know, the struggles that we're talking about today in terms of the people who are struggling to, you know, keep Islam in their hearts and, the, you know, even from their families and all these different trials that they're going through. Let us be like the Sahaba, inshallah, and fight through those desires. Uthman ibn Affan is the one that I am really pushing for today. And I have another selfish request, Hassan ibn Thabit, who is, you know, mashallah, someone that, you know, one of the Sahaba that I admire deeply. I see three people have supported the Hassan ibn Thabit. I need at least 10. This has to be rounded off at 10, inshallah. So another seven people, inshallah, who can be like Hassan ibn Thabit, be like Asma ibn ba bint Abi Bakr, be like the people who we see here, mashallah, who have sacrificed so much for this deen. And we saw this testimony by Sister Sada Sultan. You know, the closest relationship I have in my life right now are those people. Okay, there we go. It's gone. But you saw it. It was there. Scroll down a little bit. Here we go. The closest relationships I have in my life right now are those people I met years ago when I started Al Maghrib. Allahu Akbar. You know, for many of us, like I said, Al Maghrib is not just an institute, it's a family. The people have met their friends there, they've met their spouses there, they've met their, you know, uh, everyone you can imagine in their lives and circles, mashallah, have really, you know, I, uh, I, I just have a small correction if you allowed me. Bismillah. Uh, not all the Sahaba River. Hey, you're right, Sheikh. Sorry. I, yeah, Ibn Abbas <laughs> is a Sahabi and Hassan. I think that was yeah, most of the that. I don't think that was <laughs> me. It was not me. Okay. <laughs> it looked like you. I don't know. We all look the same anyway. But alhamdulillah. Okay. You know, Sheikh, by the way, one thing that I want to also correct, because I did mention this earlier, that, um, you know, this goal here that we have, uh, this number, as I see it in Canadian dollars, I think we're close to halfway through our goal. Now, of course, 
a lot of people get much more generous in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. We know, you know, from what I understand, the last 10 nights begin, I believe, tonight or tomorrow. We're in like the last 10 zone. Okay? Tonight, tonight, inshallah, based on when did you start your uh, fasting? Right. If you start your fasting uh, on, on Monday, so mm -hmm. tonight is the first. If you start on Tuesday, tomorrow is the first night. So it's so, the night of the 21st. 21st. So, Sheikh, what would be the hikmah in spreading your donations out through these last 10 nights? Because some people, some people might think, all right, well, I'll just make it tonight or I'll make it tomorrow. What would be the added benefit of allowing your donation to last the last 10 nights? First, um, we know that Hadith and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said every day there is an angel who will say, oh Allah, he pray for those who give. So you get this dua not once, you give dua every day from the angels that Allah accept from you and give you a replacement when you give every day. That's number one. Number two, you're seeking Laylatul Qadr. And Laylatul Qadr is more than a thousand months. Khayrun min al -fishar. So many people said it is equal to 83. No, it's more than 83 years of, of, of Amr Saleh. So if you give a sadaqa in Laylatul Qadr, as if you be giving sadaqa for 83 years, more than 83 years, as if you read the Quran more than 83 years, you need the reward of it. So here we say that when you do this every night or every day, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this as part of the good deeds that you did in uh, Laylat al-Qadr, in the day of Laylat al-Qadr. Um, uh, also, sometimes it is just uh, a matter of uh, breaking it. So you, you donate, you basically, you have your sadaqah is distributed. But it doesn't matter, even if you do it today, Alhamdulillah, fully, that's fine too. But the whole purpose of breaking it over the night is to um, reach Laylat al-Qadr and to be among those who have donated in that blessed day and blessed night. Inshallah. Please, please, brothers and sisters, let's make a contribution now. As you, as you heard from the Shaykh, you know, it is a beautiful opportunity really in these last 10 nights to do something which can Help all of us, inshallah. Sheikh Walid, we thank you for your generosity, for providing us with your time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your lessons, your teaching, your wisdom that you've imparted upon all of us. And Sheikh, if I can kindly request that you just make a final dua for all those who have donated, all those who are hoping to donate, maybe to encourage them as well, inshallah, to do something khair with the time they have left. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Rahman, al-Rahim, al-Jawad, al uh, أن يبارك في كل من أنفق اللهم أعطي منطقا خلفا اللهم أعطي منطقا خلفا اللهم بارك له فيما أعطوا فيما أبقى هو الله the most generous the most merciful uh, the most kind the most loving our Lord the one who we worship the one who ne we never worship other than him يا الله we ask you by your names and attributes to accept from us our صدقات يا رب accept for us who have given يا رب whatever they have given replace it with better uh, for them in this dunya and the akhirah. Ya Rabb, make this sadaqat uh, a reason and a means for the righteous, for the righteousness of their hearts, their children, their family, or a reason for their happiness in this dunya and the akhirah. Ya Rabb, bless whatever they have given and bless whatever what they have left. Ya Rabb, I ask you to give us the strength to give. Ya Rabb, give us the love to give. Ya Rabb, make us among those who give sadaqah tonight, mm -hmm. sincerely for your sake, and make the sadaqah beneficial, and put barakah and blessings in it. Ya Rabb, I ask you to bless those who are the wealthy among us, and to make it easy for those who are the poor among us. And I ask mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names and attributes, as we're doing these good deeds, with this, we're seeking his pleasure, to make it easy for our brothers and sisters of Palestine, and our right. brothers and sisters in Syria and in Kashmir and in India and China and many places where people are abused, but especially right. with the genocide, with the crisis that's taking place in Palestine and Gaza. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for them. We ask Allah right. subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring relief to them as soon as possible. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Al-Maghrib, to bless the instructor, the, the students, the volunteers, the people who work for this institute, and to keep it on the way of Muhammad sallallahu the path of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to make all our actions sincere and according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to accept it from all of us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala Muhammad wa ala Ali. Thank you for having me, and jazakum khair for all the good deeds that you guys are doing. 
Thank you. Honor to be always with you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Barak Allah fikum. Zakat Allah khair, Sheikh. MashaAllah. It's an honor to have, you know, people like Sheikh Waleed joining us for this wonderful live. You know, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. You get to see, for those who haven't been to Ilmfest, you basically got a digital Ilmfest today. MashaAllah. Because we had, you know, all the instructors here with us. It's beautiful to be with all of our, our wonderful students all around the world. Please continue to donate, inshallah. Be generous in these last 10 blessed nights of Ramadan. We know the reward of giving, especially at a time when we are fasting, especially at a time when our rewards are being multiplied. Now is the time. If there was ever a time to give, it is exactly right now. Please, inshallah, go to the website almagrib.org slash donate and benefit this amazing institute which has benefited Amin. thousands and millions of people all around the world. And don't be greedy for yourself. Spread the khair. Tell your friends and family. You have perhaps people in your life that would also, inshallah, like to benefit as well. Let your friends and family know they can also contribute. They can also benefit. Because again, this is an opportunity for all of us to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please, inshallah, be generous in these last 10 nights. Give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't feel shy. Even sisters, Sheikh, give us the fatwa. You can give your husband's money. Allahu Akbar. Sheikh gave us the green light. So, Masha, <laughs> my wife wasn't watching. What is it? You must be in a soundproof studio. <laughs> <laughs> she's, right. she's here somewhere. I got to be careful. <laughs> you can hear everything. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, one thing, uh, I'll give you a tip. I do sometimes at fundraising. I sometimes I know people, so I, I will call them and I say, Hey, by the way, I put a five hundred dollars uh, as a pledge for you to give that's to that, this organization. Hey, you know, uh, would it be okay? You know, would you? And ninety percent of the time, they tell me yes. It's like a lucky thank you. So you can even make the pledge if you're rich enough to cover the the money. Yes, fine, right. you can pay it. And and if he didn't pay you, you're fine with donating it. But if not, make that pledge. And when you call them, don't tell them. Hey, Isa just said, no, I have this amount on your behalf. Okay. You know, pledge, what do you think? Yes. And when he get you the money, just send the money to al -Maghrib. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and you put them just on the spot. And sometimes, remember, people will be pulled to Jannah with chains. Chains. So sometimes oh, you need, yeah. So you need that sometimes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You see, Sheikh Ammar, this is a pro tip. This is the difference between ilm and hikmah. Allah, mm. Allah. Sheikh has managed both. Mastered Mashallah. both. You know, by the way, Sheikh Walid has done this to me and it has worked. Okay, oh, yeah? You. He you called know? you up? He's called me up. But this is the power. When Sheikh Walid asks, what am I going to say? No? What yeah. am I, like an idiot? You know, yeah. of course, I have to say yes to the Sheikh. <laughs> but the same way that, you know, that enthusiasm of getting other people involved because we don't want to... But you, you just fulfilled the pledge in Canadian dollars. You don't tell him that part. <laughs> <laughs> it's about $30 USD, alhamdulillah. That's like a, a meal at a restaurant. But you know, uh, Sheikh Ammar, I'm going to let you take over. Uh, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm honored to be with you all here today. I have to go soon. But uh, before I do, inshallah, I'll give it over to my uh, my evil twin. Or I should say, I'm the evil twin. You're the good. This is what happens when you don't. Uh, hold on, Buna, before you go, man, you got to give us, listen. Huh. Let's not let's not pretend that you don't do what you do. What, fundraise? I've been no, doing that all day, brother. No, no, what are you no, talking no, about? No, no, no. No, we need we need a poem. Nemo understands. But the the, the internet is cutting. No, 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 it's not cutting off at all. It's not cutting off at all. Oh, hold give, on. Give Let us me... a little something, man. Put us in a Ramadan last ten nights vibe. Can you hear that? No, no, I can't hear anything. The only thing we can hear in your, is your voice. I had a really good sound effect of the old choppy internet, but I guess uh, nobody can benefit from that. Okay, no. Uh I'll do a sneak peek of a poem, and only if somebody in the chat right now can commit. To a Hassan ibn Thabit. I'll only do it in that way. Okay. Somebody has to commit right now. Somebody has to say, brother, I will be like Hassan ibn Thabit and donate whatever that is in USD. Uh, $70 in USD. 1000 in Canadian. Okay? <laughs> Not a 1000 man. It's like 700 or something like that. 700. Got it. You Americans, you guys are rich. You should, don't stress out about it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, Najma said done. Like, really? Oh, man. Najma I wasn't expecting from, that. Najma from Canada said done. I need two. I need two, brother. That's the only way this works. I have one sister. I need one brother as well. Because, you know, the brothers, I, they I like to see talk a lot. in the chat. This chat seems like it's all sisters. MashaAllah. That means that we have very generous people because the brothers are, you know, we already know the situation with the brothers. Where are the men? That's what the sisters keep asking. And I have no answer for them. I don't know where they are either. I'll do... Sanya from France says, I give a smile. That's also uh, a sadaqa. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that's also a sadaqa. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if, if is, is it is it a sadaq if nobody sees it, you know, a, a smile over a, a chat. We have to just take her word for it. Unfortunately, we have no way of proving that that she even smiled. But I believe her. Alhamdulillah. 
Okay, everyone's. I'm getting threatening messages now. Nemo, tell yeah, me a poem now. Okay, I'm gonna do just a piece of a poem. Okay, because you know I started doing this thing where I would combine poetry with Quran, and it was this thing that I invented, and then uh, <laughs> and then I saw Sheikh Ahmad do it, and I was like, oh, that's odd, because I'm pretty sure that was my thing. <laughs> hey, bro, it. listen, listen, we're just you know, it's it's Coke and that Coke, it's 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 Coke and Pepsi. No, no, brother, Coke you're you're the Coke. I'm not involved in this. Uh, uh, we're boycotting all Coke products. Yeah, we're brother. boycotting all of these products. You're... I'm uh, I'm I don't know what the alternative. Oh, there was Salam Cola. I'm Salam. Probably. Have you heard of that one, Salam Cola? Yeah, Salam Cola. I'm Salam Kola, alhamdulillah. I don't know what you are, brother. You can speak for yourself. Yeah, but I would just say this, that, uh, you know, as we are thinking about the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the names of Allah azza wa jal is Ar-Razaq. Mm. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who opens the doors for our risk. That sometimes, mm -hmm. I told the story earlier, that sometimes, you know, the money comes from places you can never imagine. I'll tell you this quick, just tidbit before I even do this piece, Ahmad, because this is really cool. You is know, this a poem about Ar-Razaq? Uh, it's a poem about the names of Allah and one okay, of them okay. is Razak, if that's okay it, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. tell the story. Tell the story. No. Okay, this is a really cool story. I'm just trying to stall because I know we're waiting for somebody as well. But I'm going to give you the story. I myself, subhanAllah, once was a broke student who didn't have, you know, really my head on the right shoulders. I didn't know what I was going to do. I remember, subhanAllah, going to Egypt and decided to study, you know, an Arabic course for the summer. And it was a really life-changing experience. You know, alhamdulillah, I really, uh, I'm really thankful for that opportunity. I was able to go. I went to Ethiopia for the first time, visited some family. But I remember just deciding I was going to go. I didn't have really a financial plan, didn't really know what my options were. But I remember, subhanAllah, meeting a brother locally in Toronto, who when I told him my intention, I said, brother, you know, I want to go study in Egypt. I want to go learn some Arabic. He said, here, I have, without even knowing, he said, brother, I have an apartment in Egypt you can stay in for free. I was like, ajeeb, subhanAllah, Really? It's like, yeah, go ahead, Bismillah. All right, Bismillah. I'm there in Egypt now. I'm living my life and I'm running out of money. I don't have any real, you know, ways of making finances. I'm just kind of studying. And my father called me and he said, SubhanAllah, you have a $10,000 check in the mail. Allahu Akbar. $10,000 just came in the mail. And I'm thinking to myself, SubhanAllah, what, how did that money even arrive? And then I remember, SubhanAllah, I wrote a grant for this thing like, like months ago. Didn't even think about it. All of a sudden, in my time of need, that money showed up. This is when we talk about al-razaq, subhanAllah. We don't know where the risk comes from. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, somebody gives you money. Alhamdulillah, great. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's, you are just, you know, you didn't, you paid your taxes. The tax return comes back. I don't know why you pay taxes anymore. Stuff for the I mean, I, I haven't paid taxes in a while. I'm just putting my business out there. But <laughs> now I know what they're supporting with my tax dollars. Oh, hell mm -hmm. no. I ain't getting a dollar. Yeah, but uh -huh. the point is that when you give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a razak can open ways for you in ways you never even imagined. Maybe there is just barakah put in your wealth. Somebody said, don't put your business on the streets. You're you're right. You listen, we got to delete this whole thing afterwards. Is this thing staying online? It is? All right, just don't tell Trudeau. It's fine. We're good. But when you understand Allah azza wa jal is a razak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani. Allah azza wa jal is not, need, is not in need of our sadaqah. But yet he is the most rich and he gives and he gives and we he gives and forgives while we get and forget. Yes, yeah, Salaam. Uh, um... You hear that? You hear that, bro? You see that? I just Mars. Be, I just be doing this. Mars. This is just, you know, I just do Mars. this on the weekends. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. All right, anyways, I'm going to just share a little bit from this poem. It's called uh, Beautiful Names. Anyone can count the seeds in an apple, but only one can count all the apples in a seed. Before the creations of the heaven and the universe, there was only one, Allah, Rabbil Alameen. Al-Wahid, who made the sun and planted the stars like trees. Al-Ahad, the unique one, with no need of slumber or sleep. Al-Khaliq, created you like Kun Fayakun from the womb to the tomb. Al-Raqib is always watching you. Al-Musawwar fashioned thee and gave you all your faculties. All praise be to Al-Hamid, to he that is perfect and complete. And glory be to Al-Majid, majestically honorable in need. And why would he need money when he is Al-Ghani? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Khalas, I've reached the end of this portion because I've seen our guests have entered the room. <laughs> Sheikh Ammar, I'll let you take it over, inshallah. You can invite our next guest. I'm super excited to see him. I know you all be as well. Why are you super excited if you're leaving? How does that work? No, I'm I'm like super oh, excited. Man, we gotta them. do this is this is this is the alternate 30 for 30. This is black on both sides. Is this Ramadan or Black History Month? What's going on, brother? <laughs> we spent a lot of time up here together. MashaAllah. 
هلا 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 شيخ عمر واكم ليتس انفايت اور نيكست جيست شيخ عمر سليمان از جويننج السلام عليكم شيخ السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله ذاك هاي دينك شيخ الحمد لله اي جست جامبت اوت اوف ذا يقين وابن اي لاف شيخ عبد الله الدرو هانجينج and he's interviewing sister sara sultan so there's a lot of uh houston there's, Dallas, there's a lot like, of back houston. and forth a lot of back and forth right now so Mashallah. i just jumped into the room alhamdulillah on the side <laughs> alhamdulillah so so before you have to get back sheikh we want to just uh, welcome you to this webinar alhamdulillah um you know, this uh this ramadan it's been a really uh obviously testing ramadan for all of us has been a very different ramadan uh mm -hmm. but uh this topic of um accepted du'as. We yes. just want to open the floor for you inshallah ta'ala and, and then we will uh, we'll ask you a few questions after inshallah. So I wanted to um, you know mention sorry one second y'all. Yeah. No Hold problem on. inshallah. Sheikh is, exactly. is multitasking right now so Sheikh we'll just... I, I'm literally multitasking so I don't right. know if I have a, I, I, no problem inshallah. I need to give, I need to give up my um my thing. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, salat salam ar-Rasulillah wa al-Adhi wa sahbihi wa man wala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all, inshaAllah ta'ala, with the best of this life and the next night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make this an accepted Ramadan for us. Allahumma ameen. Um, you know, subhanAllah, one of the things I want to draw on is what Sheikh Ammar actually has been doing in his Ramadan series, which, by the way, has been excellent. So, my family, just so you know, and this is not an exaggeration, Alhamdulillah, my kids do watch the Why Me series. They literally finish my series every day after school, and then they 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 move over to Sheikh Hamar's uh, Ramadan series every day. Alhamdulillah, so they've been following his Names of Allah series uh, very closely and have seen the great benefit of it. So it's been a great way to to bring them together. Alhamdulillah, um, and one of the things that I think speaks to the moment, you know, there's a narration from Ibrahim Adam Rahimahullah that one day he was stuck on a ship, and there was these, you know, the strong storm that started to carry the ship right and left. And as the winds were to blow the ship over, he made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Ya Rabb, qad araytana qudratak fa'arina aflak. Oh Allah, you have shown us your power, so show us your mercy. Oh Allah, you have shown us your power, so show us your mercy. And it's such a profound dua if you think about it, because he is going from one attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's experienced and invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something else in the process. So, oh Allah, you have shown us your power, so show us your mercy and forgiveness. And subhanAllah, as we're witnessing now in Ramadan, I think that it's important for us to understand that when you look at the duas of the salihin, when you look at the duas of the righteous, you can take lesson about how to go from experiencing Allah in one name and asking him for something that relates to that same name, or you can attest to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered you by calling upon one name and then call upon him by another name as well, or another attribute as well. And now I was almost thinking about this dua and this day and age, subhanAllah, with everything that's happening in Gaza, it's, oh Allah, you've shown us your mercy, show us your power. Show us your power in regards to the oppressors Show us your power in regards to those that harm our brothers and sisters. You've shown us your mercy, O oh Allah, show them your mercy. You've shown us your power, O oh Allah, show them your power. O oh Allah, we ask you to be with our brothers and sisters, ya jabbar, ya qahab, to overcome their oppressor. The last thing I'll say here, inshallah ta'ala, is just that I've noticed, you know, of course, uh, there is a renewed interest in sort of the punishment of the tyrants and people finding comfort in knowing about the punishment of the tyrants in Islam. And in that, also, I think there's a renewed interest, inshallah, a way for us to educate ourselves in regards to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are meant not just for us to call upon Him, not just for us to connect to Him, but also that are meant to strike fear in the hearts of those tyrants so that perhaps they may be overcome or maybe uh, some of them would wake up uh, from their tyranny. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us His power in regards to those that oppress our brothers and sisters. Allahumma ameen. And inshallah ta'ala, I'll hand it back to you. I mean, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Real quick, I know you got to run, but uh, you're obviously somebody who's uh, very, 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 very busy. Uh, one of the questions we've been asking our instructors, including our busiest instructors, is with the very, very little time that you do have, what makes you continue to support Al-Maghrib? What is it about Al-Maghrib that makes you continue to give your time and energy and effort? Al-Maghrib is a pioneering organization that never stopped pioneering, alhamdulillah. So it started off so many good efforts and it continues to lead the way, alhamdulillah, and to build true community around knowledge. 
and that's what I love about Al Maghrib. And inshallah ta'ala will uh, be with Al Maghrib as long as you guys don't get too frustrated with me and say, you know, uh, oh. you're, not, you're not showing up on time to the webinar. So don't worry, I don't show up either. But uh, Jazakallah Khair Sheikh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and accept from you. Jump back into the Yaqeen webinar. Allah is back. Allah is back. Uh, and this is uh, beautiful. Ramadan is such a hectic time, you know, uh, for everybody really. But what you can imagine for shiuch and teachers, Ramadan is the most hectic time. And you're seeing people on the go, running around, jumping from one webinar to coming to another. People, people in commute. Joining from hotel rooms before flights, right landing from flights. That's what we've been seeing today, alhamdulillah. But everybody's trying to make sure to be here and be present because of what Al Maghrib means to them, as well as what Al Maghrib means to you and what Al Maghrib means to all of us. So make sure that you continue to support, inshallah ta'ala. I do want to invite a very special person whom Al Maghrib means a lot to as well, and that's Ustad Abdurrahman Wood, Columbia, Columbus, not Columbia, not Columbia yet, but Columbus, Ohio's finest. Welcome, Sheikh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, doing well. Uh, very energized after four events last night. Had a long night up with Allah the Akbar. Uh, I'm the youth director at my uh, masjid here. And so we were just back and forth between talking to the kids at the Sahur Fest, at the basketball tournament, at the Qiyam. And a lot of energy and action last night. Got some rest. And then I thought, how am I going to do this today? But mashallah, the energy is, is here today. And I'm so excited to be with you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, Sheikh, I, I want to ask you just about your own your own experience with Al Maghrib. Obviously, you're an Emir of uh, of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, but what has Al Maghrib meant to you and and your particular journey? Absolutely. So, for me, Al Maghrib in Columbus started way back in the beginning, mid two thousands. And at that point, I was watching from the sidelines. I wasn't necessarily involved in the classes directly, but cheering them on. And as the years went by, what I noticed is that the students of Al-Maghrib of yesterday, today became our masjid presidents. They became wow. folks who are going to study overseas. They became people who founded charities, mashallah. And you find that they would readily attribute uh, their motivation, their desire, the knowledge that they took and implemented in these various facets in their lives to what they experienced in Al-Maghrib. So that was the first thing. Uh, the other thing is I have a background in adult education. I was a trainer, a corporate trainer for some years. And the methodology, the methods that are implemented that are able to bring Islam in a modern context, still true to the tradition, but using and blending in modern educational techniques, uh, things like experiential learning, uh, things like you know workshops and activities within the course of a class to people pe keep people engaged. These are sorts of things that you just didn't see on the landscape in the past. Yeah. Of course, the online portion, we now see that we're pioneering in that regard as well. And then Al-Maghrib went on a bit of a hiatus. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, who I believe is coming after me, actually started or helped restart our qabila. Our qabila is called Mujaddad, the revival. Mm. And he uh, brought uh, the beautiful patient seminar in 2018. And shortly after that, the leadership team locally invited me to come in and start to help. And we're continuing to see a lot of the same things I talked about. Uh, our folks who were in seminars two, three years ago, they're now off studying overseas. They're now off founding things and doing amazing things. And so you just see that there's real fruit. You don't have to be theoretical about it. You can see the fruit in your community. You can see the fruit in the work that's being done around the ummah. And so those things inspired me then and continue to inspire me now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, when you say the fruit, really quickly, and then we'll we'll, we'll jump into it. What, what is that? In a city like Columbus, Ohio, uh, it's it's for the in the U.S. in the U.S. it's considered to be the Midwest. It's a medium-sized city. What does that fruit look like? Absolutely. So the the fruit, I would say, it's it's multifaceted, right? Uh, it is in a a father who is confidently able to impart concepts about the dean to his children because he understands things. He had questions about them when I was with him in college. He had questions. He wasn't sure but he went through light of guidance. He went through other courses and he was able to clarify those doubts, clarify those issues. And now I see him raising his kids and those kids, mashallah, are confident. Those kids are our are, are hafad. Those kids are leading us in Salta Tarawih this year, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So it's the real interactions, right? Again, it's nothing you have to 
think about or theorize, I'm reaching out and literally touching these people, shaking their hands, patting their, kid, their uh, kids on the head every day. Uh, it's a, a very vibrant and very real fruit that we see from that regard. And it is, I, I think this is really important to say, and those of you who are watching, I think you can relate to this. We live in an era in which so much of knowledge has become uh, 60 second clips. It's become disengaged with actual teachers. I'm taking it through the internet. I'm taking it through a video and there's benefit in that, no doubt about it. But there's something to be said about having access to a teacher. And that's how this has always been. It's yep. always been imparted from teachers. It's always been passed down. That teacher that can clarify your question, that can say, hey, you didn't quite understand that, right? The video can't tell you, you completely misunderstood what I said. The yep. book can't tell you, you, yep. you didn't get that quite right. But yep. a Maghrib has that balance where we have teachers, we have guidance that allows people not just to learn their religion, uh, but to have the context of trusted resources, of a vibrant and supportive community. And all of those things uh, are, are continuing to inspire me. And that's why... I support the with my time, with my effort and energy, energy, and I'm so grateful to see the uh, tremendous support that we're seeing from all of you out there as well. Yeah, you know, you brought up a really good point, uh, a great point actually, which is what al Maghrib does. And I think Nadia, uh, who's in the chat, a, a living legend herself, she mentioned this one time, uh, one of our uh, Amiros of Minnesota. And that is, is that what makes al Maghrib unique is that it allows for the student to, to engage with the teacher. Yes. A lot of places, you don't have access. You'll go to a lecture and there'll be 300 people there. And, you know, just because of the nature of the event, the speaker is in and out, the sheikh is in and out, and you don't really have the opportunity. But in all of our platforms, whether it's an on-site event or whether it's an online course or whether it's a virtual seminar, you have the ability to engage. We design every course that we teach with that ingredient factored in, the ability for you to ask questions. So whether it's, you know, Sheikh Umar Suleiman teaching an Al-Maghrib online course, there's live Q&As where you're going to be able to join a Zoom and ask him questions in a way that you might not be able. Ustad Yasmin Mujahid, same idea. Ustad exactly. Taymiyyah Zubair, same idea. Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, when he's teaching a virtual seminar, same idea. Or whether we're on site, of course, the ability for you to ask and be able to engage your teacher and ask questions and have things cl clarified is a great, great gift. And that is something that until today is still very unique with Al-Maghrib, alhamdulillah. And it's something that even as da'wah has shifted, we haven't let go of and we don't plan on letting go of it because it's such an important part of learning. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. E even the, the Names of Allah web series, right? If you're in the... Uh... The top secret Telegram group. <laughs> oh, we have a top secret Telegram group. So we have the YouTube, but even YouTube, we don't do the same. So we have a Telegram group. It's not top secret, but anybody not, can join, not. inshallah. <laughs> yes, inshallah. But uh, yeah, it's for people who, who are watching the YouTube videos every day and they have questions and we're going back and forth and we're investing a lot of time. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Speaking of uh, legends, we got we to gotta invite Sheikh Abdul Bari, but I just want to let everybody know, please make sure, inshallah ta'ala, that you support Al Maghrib with something today. With something, it doesn't have to be five thousand. It doesn't have to be one thousand. But make sure that you support with something today. And if you've supported before, support today. Like Sheikh Walid mentioned, that beautiful hadith of the Prophet said that if you support twice, if you double up, inshallah Taala, you'll get called from the gates of paradise by the angels. Welcome, Sheikh Na Sheikh Abdul Bari. Zakhla Khair, Sadat Abdul Hamad. You're gonna hang around, right? You're you're still here. I'll be here. I'll be here, inshallah. Okay. Sheikh Abdul Bari, how are you? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah. Doing Alhamdulillah. Good. Sheikh, I remembered you, um, uh, you. You introduced me to a special way of eating seafood. And I, I always remember you anytime I'm ever able to experience it. The the crab fish with the, the breaking of the shrimps and all of that type of stuff. That's really random. I see you're giving me a completely blank stare, so I'm just going to keep it moving. You I'm have no recollection of this. You have no recollection of this. Don't worry about it. I'm just trying to remember. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay. It's what did okay. I teach you about seafood? Here, here I was. My life was changed, and you're like, I don't even know who you are. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> the only I seafood I know, I know is... Body. In Ramadan, we say seafood to eat food when it's time for iftar. That's how yes, the seafood does. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello, sir. How are you doing, Sheikh? How's Seattle? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, doing good. So, Sheikh, we've been reflecting on, uh, obviously, uh, accepted du'as, uh, inspiring stories. 
So I want to open up the floor for you, inshallah ta'ala, and, and let you uh, share an accepted du'a. Fadlish it. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam na rasulillahu ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam taslima kathira amma ba'd. I wanted to share with everyone a uh, hadith. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure many of you have heard the hadith before. Um, and it is a very, very important hadith. And there are so many lessons that we can take from uh, in how to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to how to increase uh, you know, the acceptance of the dua, inshallah. Uh, so the story, of course, uh, is in a hadith uh, from the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from a hadith from Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. Uh, who said that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, and he so this is a story that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told uh, the companions, and he said, and it's the story of the three people who were stuck in a cave, and uh, they were looking for a place to spend the night, and they found a, a cave, and so when they went into that cave, a huge boulder rolled down the mountain, and blocked the mouth of the cave. And this boulder was so huge that they were unable to move it at all whatsoever, even all three of them together. And so one of them says, so they look at each other and they say, you know, there's no way that we can be saved from this boulder except with our supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our righteous deeds. And so... Then they start, and the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that the first person then says, Oh Allah, I used to have parents who were elderly, and one day I went very far seeking pasture for my flock. So I returned very late, but when I came back, I had found them sleeping already. And I never gave any uh, anyone, I never allowed anyone to eat supper or you know the nightly drink before before them. And so I sat at their bedside with the the milk or with the drink in my hand because I was afraid that they would wake up at nighttime and not have, you know, maybe they were thirsty and they maybe not have, you know, uh, wake up in the middle of the night and um, wanting something to drink or being hungry. And so he said, I spent the whole night, I spent the whole night uh, holding that drink in my hand at their bedside uh, and, and until to the break of dawn. And in other words, until Fajr, the whole night, he was there. And he said, oh Allah, if I did this solely for your sake, then free us from the calamity that we're in, meaning save us from the situation that we're in. And the boulder moved. And so, of course, this is a very, very long hadith, and um, it would take uh, more than actually a a, a a a whole lecture to really um, that truly benefit and give it its right. Uh, but inshallah, um, we'll try to mention some of the benefits of this dua and or this uh, story in relation to the answering of supplication. First, this. This man, um, he, what he was doing, what he was doing was something that his parents, all of our parents did for us when we were infants, when we were babies. All of our parents did this for us. They would sometimes spend the whole nights and they would always have the milk ready for us at any time. If we were to wake up at any time of the night, it was always there, and if they ever ran out of milk, you know, you know that your, uh, you know, your mother was going to tell your father to go to the closest store that was still open and bring milk, even in the middle of the night. And so, whatever this man was doing, you might think, "Wow, that's so amazing! That's so amazing what he did." But whatever he did, all of our parents did that for us already, and so to. You know, to, to look at uh, the, the benefits, the virtues of being uh, righteous and kind to your parents. Uh, we see that when you supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplicate with your righteous deeds. And this is one of the most righteous of deeds that a person can do to take care of their parents, especially when they're elderly. It's, it's a way to Jannah. 
And of course, the second person makes and supplicates also. And then the third person supplicates. And every single time they supplicate, the boulder moves. But it's not enough for all of them to leave until finally the last person, the third person, supplicates. And then the boulder moves enough so that they could leave. And so they were saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their dua, the supplication, that they supplicated with their righteous deeds. But another lesson that we can extract from this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have easily moved the boulder all the way uh, with that first person to the point where they could have easily left, could easily left after the first supplication was accepted, but the boulder didn't move enough. Boulder didn't move enough. And each one of the supplications, each supplication from each of the three was needed, was needed. And this is a lesson for us in this ummah that don't belittle your dua, don't belittle your supplication. Every one of us, you know, when our brothers and sisters are going through difficulties, hardships in, in Gaza and other places in the world, and you might say, you know what, What's who, who am I to just, you know, to make dua and to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I make a difference? But yes, we, inshallah, can make a difference. And all of us, we need to make dua. We need to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each one of us. And also, another lesson that we can extract and we can learn from this beautiful story that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has told us that is that when when you're when you respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to you. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Ta'arraf ila Allah Ya'arifka fi shidda. Know Allah in times of ease, and He will know you in times of hardship, in times of difficulties. You supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will respond to you. And so when you're being called to give, when you're being called to give, to Donate, give, and inshallah, when you're responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to you. Also, when you when you help others, also. Allah fi fi al abd ma kan al abd fi awni akhi. A person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to help a, a person, um, his servants, as long as he continues to help his brothers. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you an opportunity to give. Give, inshallah. And when you respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the difficulty time, the difficult times come, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also respond to you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds during this month. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who, had, who he has um, uh, entered uh, his paradise and also saved us. From the hellfire. Amin, Ya Rabbi. Amin, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Sheikh. That uh, hadith, I have a very special memory, actually, with you sharing it. Uh, it was a long time ago uh, in New Jersey Dawah Conference. I remember you sharing that hadith, and I might have been like, uh, I was either like 21, 22 years old. And I remember it, yep. you're in that page, that age when you're just, you want to be out late with your friends every night that you can. <laughs> and I remember I attended the conference and you were sharing that hadith and you said, you know, this person stayed up all night just so that his parents could sleep. And some of us don't allow our parents to sleep because we're out all night. And it was just like one of those like lines, it's a bar. And it just, I remember it sticking with me because... I was very much coming home at 2, 3 a.m. And, and having the memory of my mother, you know, still waiting up for me to come back. And it was uh, it was a life-changing um, experience, just you sharing that. Jazakallah khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and accept from you. Sheikh, uh, a, a quick, uh, you know, before we let you go, just we've been asking everyone, what is, uh, you know, you, you're one of the earliest Maghrib instructors. I think people know that. But what uh, what has kept you involved within Maghrib 
uh, over these over these years. We've been asking everyone, why do they support Al Maghrib with their time and their energy and their life's resource? Well, Al Maghrib, uh, just the example that you mentioned that Al Maghrib is life changing. You know, Al Maghrib is life changing, and sometimes you might mention something and you teach something you don't even uh, remember the moment that you said it or how many people benefit from it, benefited from it. But you know, to just to to hear, um, you know, stories like that, like you you mentioned, also when we go around, we do hear other people telling us um, uh, that some of the things that you just teach, and it's not something, it's just from the Quran and from the Sunnah, and you're just passing it on. Mm -hmm. But these are life-changing experiences for so many people, and you're making such a big difference. And Al-Maghrib is making a difference in uh, in the da'wah and for, for the ummah, that you know it, it motivates you and it keeps you going. Um, and... It's it's something also that you know as we know that the Prophet sallallahu said when a person passes away, um, there are three things uh, that follow him or that that will continue to benefit him. And the first thing that the Prophet sallallahu mentioned was knowledge that others will benefit from. And mm -hmm. and the and the fact that the Prophet sallallahu even mentioning that first is very very significant also because that's one of the most beneficial things that imagine you're just you know, you, a person can just spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to donate for Al-Maghrib. And as a result of that, you don't know the difference that you're making. Yeah. So many people are coming back to the deen. So many people are actually learning the deen. And also so many people are accepting Islam. There are so many people who are benefiting those whom you know and those that you do not know. And, you know, since it's Ramadan, you know, the Prophet said, Lisa'imi farhatan, a person who's fasting has two moments of joy. Mm. You know, the moment that that person sees that food and is about to make iftar, and he makes iftar, that's like, <laughs> that's, that, that's a moment yeah, that, you know, like I remember I was bringing some chicken to the masjid. And these two kids are like running towards with chicken. <laughs> like they were so happy. It's like, it was like, uh, for them, it was like Eid because they're yeah. hungry, right? And so they're so happy to see food. And uh, of course, the moment of joy when you're breaking your fast is amazing. But the Prophet said, there are two moments. And the other moment is that when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the word far'a is, you know, you have the word sa'ada, happiness and surur, and, and mm. they meet. You know, happiness also farha is like that something you see that's so surprising, so amazing, that gives you that joy. And so the joy in the hereafter will be so much greater. Why? Because you'll be surprised by the reward of fasting. You weren't expecting that much. Allah but Allah. the reward is so great that you it's just like, you know, it's like wow. Like wow. that's it's like when a person's hungry, you know, you really want it, you really need it. And then you see it and it's so it tastes so much better, like food that you eat, just regular food in Ramadan. When you're hungry, it tastes so much better. Right. Right? Even water, water tastes, I mean, like subhanAllah, when you when you just drink, when you're thirsty, when you drink water, it's and it gives you this, this joy. It's on the day of judgment. Uh, everything is so much better. The reward, inshallah, that you're giving to support Al Maghrib, you might not. Think much of it, mm. but then, inshallah, it will give you that moment of joy uh, that will be so amazing that you're just, you know, it's like mind blowing uh, in the hereafter. And so, anytime you have the opportunity to give, to, you know, be at the service of Islam and the Muslims, especially when it comes to seeking knowledge, they never, never let that opportunity pass. Jazakallah khair, Shah Abdi May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you and bless you and bless your family and your time and your da'wah and accept from you. Jazakallah khair, Shah. So with that, guys, uh, we're going to be wrapping up in the next five minutes, inshallah ta'ala. Wherever time zone you're at, we're going to wrap up in the next five minutes. Thank you to Shaykh Abdi Bari and all of our wonderful instructors and all of our hosts. Abuna uh, Muhammad and uh, Usada Abdurrahman for joining us and uh, Hafsa, Sir Hafsa, um, 
and everybody behind the scenes, Sister Fasleen and, and the whole team, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. And for all of you who have been attending for the past four hours, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. And for still having energy in the chat and um, engaging. And I want you to keep in mind that in exactly seven minutes, we're just going to switch over to Ramadan 360. So if you still got energy and interest, you can join us there. But for now, do not leave this live without making a contribution to Al-Maghrib after everything that we've heard. And it doesn't have to be a lot. And replace yourself with someone else as well. You know, share it into your chats. Share it into your, your groups. Just let them know, hey, almaghrib.org forward slash donate. And I would encourage you all to support. In these last 10 nights, I want to reiterate the fact that we have daily donations set up at nighttime. So you don't even have to stress and worry, is it going to be withdrawn during the day? But alhamdulillah, our technology is ridiculous. MashaAllah, tawarakallah. So you can uh, make your daily donations for the evening of the last 10 nights making sure that every night you're supporting Al-Maghrib and you're supporting knowledge and all of these beautiful projects that you've been hearing about. That being said, my dua is still last. And you thought I was just going to let you sign off without it. But um, I'll be honest, I was going to I was gonna not share it, but I think it's just appropriate. And it's one that I love very, very much. And it's the mother of Maryam. The mother of Miriam, she says, She says, my Lord, I offer you what is in my womb, so accept it from me. It's going to be in your service. This boy, you are a Samuel Adim. You are the one who accepts. You are the knowledgeable. And those who are in the names of Allah group, you know why I said the one who accepts. Or a Samia. It is the one who accepts in this scenario. But what I love about this, because this webinar is about how to make dua. Part of how to make dua is knowing how to respond to your accepted dua when it looks like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose a different route for you. She was making dua for a boy who would serve al Masjid al Aqsa, and she gives birth to a girl. On the outside, does it look like her dua was accepted? Yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? Did it look like her dua was accepted when she had been begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a boy and he gives her a girl? Now, how many of us have been in those shoes before where you were making dua for X and you got Y? And you might say, Allah did not respond to my dua. People might say that. But yet, what does she say? She says, When she gave birth, she said, my Lord, I gave birth to a girl. And Allah knew better what she gave birth to. And I named her Maryam. This is a really, really beautiful sentence. Because she had wanted a boy who would serve al Masjid al-Aqsa. But when she gave birth to a girl, she didn't completely reject the idea. She didn't self-sabotage. She didn't entertain doubt. She didn't think, oh my God, this is a sign that God hates me. This is a sign that I'm worthless, that I'm useless, that my dua wasn't accepted, that this child is worthless. She didn't, she didn't project any negativity on the baby girl because she gave birth to a girl like so many people do in the past and the present. She said, I have named her Maryam. And Maryam means the servant of her Lord. As if to say, if she can't serve you in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, she can serve you here. I'm not giving up on the dream that I have for her. And I still value her. And I seek refuge in you for her and her children from Shaitan al rajim That is a beautiful, beautiful change. That is a beautiful response and a beautiful da'a that a parent is making for a child that they were not expecting. And with that, she says, my Lord, accept from me. And it is something that we always, always have to remember that even as we're offering these actions that we're offering, the most important ingredient is not how much or how great or how long we pray or how you know difficult our fast is or how much charity we give. That's not the most important ingredient. The most important factor is, does Allah accept? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah accepts, 
whoever donates what's equal to a date from Rizq that is Tayyib and Allah accepts it. If Allah accepts that one dollar, and I'm going to end here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grow it. Like one of you raises a baby, a baby horse until it becomes like a mountain. You just If you donate a dollar, but Allah accepts, that's the most important ingredient. Allah accepted, you're good to go. Khalas. If Allah accepts, so don't forget to always ask Allah for acceptance. And so at the end of this webinar, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. We ask Allah to accept from everybody who gave, everybody who intended to give, everybody who showed up, everybody who shared, everybody who spoke, everybody who said ameen, everybody who encouraged others in the chat and beyond it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all and we receive the reward of all of this, inshallah ta'ala, on the day that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair, everybody. We're signing out. We'll see you at Ramadan 360. Assalamu alaikum.